Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are back at the Orange Bowl where the Fredonia Hillbillies will take on Portville tonight for another league match, division match. And Fredonia really needs to come up with a win tonight, Pat. They're 0-2 so far in league. And this is a big game for them to get back on track. Yeah, it's a beautiful night here down at the Orange Bowl. Some Friday Night Lights action and uh, we got an, uh, another new school coming into town now, you know. I haven't seen these guys play, so I'm excited to uh, watch a nice little high school football game tonight. Yeah, and absolutely. I didn't introduce ourselves. I'm Shannon Davis, and Pat Mahaney is by my side again. And the Portville Panthers last year, Pat, they were Class D, and now they're back up to C. They're one of those schools that's always on the fence, up and down. But one thing about Portville, historically, they're a bunch of tough kids. It's going to be a real physical game. They're, they're not as shy of contact. They're not going to make it easy on the Fredonia Hillbillies. Portville is two and one on the season. Fredonia is one and two. More importantly, 0 oh and two in the division. Portville is one and one. One common opponent, uh, both lost to Southwestern, but Portville is a little different. They lost zero to three. We all An know we're not even shootout. gonna mention, yeah. We're not even going to mention last week's score, um, but obviously last year, at the or last week uh, at the Orange Bowl, Fredoni came up on the wrong end, uh, but they're looking to bounce back. They really, they're not out of the playoff picture by any means, but this game is a must. You cannot go 0-3 in division and, and have a lot of chance to make the playoffs. So they really need to get back on track here and, and make a statement tonight that they're still the Fredonia Hillbillies and they're still on track to make their goal of the stadium. So it's going to be a real test for them and see how they bounce back, not only physically but emotionally after two very disappointing losses against Casadega, Maple Grove, mm -hmm. Faulkner, and then obviously the real heartbreaker last week against Southwest. Yeah, this, will, this is what's going to show what this team's made of. you got to dig deep. The, the seniors got to bring this team together, and you got to come back. They're going to need a victory tonight to come off that loss last week. So uh, we'll, it'll be interesting to see how they come out and play. Yeah, and, and another key, uh, Sam Atzrott, 
We, we saw him very, very, very Ooh. limited last week. He's not even dressed tonight, so he will not be playing at all this week as he's still recovering for a shoulder injury. So your star senior not on the field, he literally does it all defensively, offensively. He's even the snapper on special teams. So you're not going to have either player tonight or either of any of those skills tonight. Yeah. We're going to pause here for the national anthem. Okay, so great job by the Fredonia Marching Band. Two weeks in a row now playing the National Anthem. It's always nice to have live music or someone singing the National Anthem instead of the recording. No, that was a nice little touch, nice little touch. And you got the student section looking good down there. It looks like some red, white, and blue, some Bills action. Yeah, a little USA theme tonight. Oh, or American yeah. nationalism something. <laughs> uh, maybe it's just Bills. I'm not sure, but there's a lot of Stars and Stripes and Bills jerseys. So. That's always a good theme. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, really. You can't go wrong <laughs> there. And, and like I said, they're looking to bounce back uh, tonight. It's going to be a real big wing. And, you know, it's going to start with Davi White tonight. Um, came out, had an outstanding first game of the season. First start ever at quarterback. Connolly Cup nomination. Um, and really, the next week put up huge numbers, but also had some key mistakes. It, but they're asking a lot of the young man. He plays special teams. He plays linebacker on defense, and he's a first-year starting quarterback. And a lot of that gets the brain going real fast, the heart beating real fast. And it's not easy, especially when a couple things go wrong. So we really got to see how Davi White responds. It'll start with him, that leadership, that calmness. He's got to start portraying that as the starting quarterback of the hillbillies yeah and i like i like what he's been doing out there this year and he's a big tough kid so he's gonna probably bounce back and have himself a good game tonight yeah you know just just eliminate some of those key mistakes at the wrong time he's put up huge numbers all three games rushing passing you know defensively he's all over it for only one to toss and deferred as you see which is very common I mean, most teams defer and want the ball in the second half uh, but last week Ferroni kicked off and didn't start out so well with that opening kickoff, but there was no pre-snap flag tonight, so that's that's a good start for the Hillbillies. And they seem to be a little bit more focused on football, right, tonight? I mean, they're, they're excited, they want to play, but it's not all the other emotions. You can see the difference already. You feel the difference. They're here ready to play focused on football tonight. Yeah, those rivalry games, though, they can be such emotional. Yes. You know, sometimes you don't have your head all the way in it because you're thinking about the rivalry and uh, more to it. And, and so it looks like they're going to be out here playing some football tonight, focusing on the focusing on the pigskin. Yeah, and, and that's and, – and, and right, the rivalry messes with you sometimes. You get so up, you pre-game mistake, and they never recover from that. I mean – Southwestern led from the opening kickoff in it, the entire game. But that was last week. We are on to the Panthers this week, wearing the maroon and white. Looks like, let's see, Aiden Shikansky is going to be kicking off for Fredonia. Back to return is 
Number 12, Henry Schwartz for the Panthers. And let's see, is that 21 or 81? 21. That is Landon. I'll let you pronounce that last name there, my friend. That's the longest name on the uh, list. Number 21. <laughs> Landon <laughs> Shepacker. Shepacker. Pocker. Pocker. I, I don't know that one. We didn't have time to get pronunciations, but it's a long one. So here we go. On another beautiful night here down at the oh, Orange Bowl. The weather has been amazing this week. Kick towards the sideline, and it's going to roll just, I mean, I don't know if that's a yard out of bounds. So it was almost yeah. a perfect kick. And let's see what the Panthers do. Um, a lot of teams have been forcing the Hillbillies to re-kick this year. It looks like, uh, it looks like they're going to take the penalty. Yeah, it it's like us. Take and, it does. And that's exactly what Fredonia wants them to do. Both Randolph and Southwestern kept making Fredonia re-kick. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, it really worked out for those teams. So little surprise Panthers aren't doing the same. And as you mentioned earlier about um, Stan Arstrat, it's he's down there being a leader down on the field. So I'm already liking what I see of him down there. Even He's not playing tonight. Um, it's definitely a huge blow, but he's down there being a leader, getting his teammates involved. You'll love to see that. Yeah, absolutely. And so the ball will be spotted automatically at the 35 because it went out of bounds. Again, Panthers could have taken a five-yard penalty and make Fredonia re-kick it. They chose to take the ball. And uh, looks like, uh, and like I said, we junior have quarterback uh, Eli Sleggs out there, number 17. Looks like he's got some nice size to him out he there. He does. Long, lanky. And like Pat Matt mentioned, we honestly, I haven't seen P Portville play in a couple of years myself. Um, I haven't seen him play all year, so we don't know a lot about it. Looks like they're going to line up under center. Real tight formation here. And it's a jet sweep to the outside. Owen rushes all over that, but he gets away. But the rest, oh, cut back the other way. He does have some room. And he turns a big loss into a nice gain on first down. That's a real nice heads yeah. up hard by 33, Ethan Coleman. Rush made a real good play to contain the end. He forced them back into the middle, back to his back to his teammates, but he was able to get outside to, to, the, to the right yeah. and get a couple yards. The backside end there has got to stay home and uh, did not do it. And Ethan Coleman ran probably 30 yards on that play, gained eight after what appeared might be a five-yard loss. So give that young man some credit. Second down and two now. Ball right at the, just shy of the 43-yard line of the Panthers. Shotgun this time. Handoff off the middle and we'll have a first down after second effort there by the running back. Let's see, was that 36 maybe? Caden Holcomb, yup, another senior running back for Portville. And that was a tackle by uh, Number nine, Ben Legro on the play. First down there for uh, Portville. So made it out. Holcomb got the ball out to the four, 47. And looks like they're going to run a nice little pro style offense. With three plays, three different formations. Yeah, twins left here. Quick hitter to the fullback. And ooh, he got set back the other way. I believe Glavy might have made that first contact, but. That's a nice push, good run on first down. It looked like it was going to be a little bit more. Here it is again. I mean, he hits a hard and boom, turned around right there. That's a real nice job by Glavy, Pat. He had blocked a bit. 68 was blocking him, Nick Monroe, at the same time. And he stood the fullback up and drove him back. Tail is old as time. Low man wins. Lead the 36, Holcomb. He's going to be short of the first down. And that, you're right, that was a straight out pro formation lead right off the guard. Yes. Fullback lead. You know, you call it all different things depending on your numbering scheme, but good Lord, I ran that play back in the 90s. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you so, know, far, I like the, so far I liked what Portville's been doing here on offense. Um, Big third down here for the Hillbillies defense. Yeah, third and three is in Hillbilly territory, so it'll be interesting to see if they don't get it. You got twins left. 
I formation behind the quarterback. Can he get, oh, that's a nice initial mm. bounce off. 72 of Fergonia there. Uh, Simon Price made real nice penetration, disrupted that play. He could not wrap him up. Here it is. You see Price getting in quickly. Couldn't make the tackle, so good job by running back there. 33, Ethan Coleman bouncing off that. He's just short. It's going to be fourth and less than a yard here, and, and the Panthers are going to go for it. I, I like this if I'm, you know, on the Panthers' sideline. I think it's the right call. Quarterback is under center, so you can even have a sneak here. But there's a lot of beef inside the middle of that line of hillbillies. No, nope, quick Ooh. hitter to the fullback, and I think, I think he's gonna have it. Yeah, base. If the sideline spot on our side is right, they're putting him at the 42, which would be a first down. I don't. Yeah, up to the 42, definitely a first down. Yeah, quick little dive there to the fullback, gets the first down for Portville. And, and Fernonia has giving up some yards to the fullback in those trap plays. We saw it with Randolph week one and definitely saw it the last couple weeks um, with the quick hitters, trap plays, taking advantage of the aggressiveness of the Fredonia defensive line. So we first and 10, ball about the 42 of the Hillbillies. Back under center, play action pass here. Swing pass, oh, nice move by seven. Getting by Fields, he's still on his feet and gonna get inside the 25 yard line. It's Aiden DeFonzio. That sophomore, and when that ball was thrown, take a look here on the replay, it looked a little dangerous at first. A little hitch pass, Fields is all over it, a little late, bad angle, DeFonzio met the ball, cut in, and then got to the outside, Gullo, Luca Gullo making the tackle, but another first down for the Panthers. Impressive first drive. And he, they scored zero points against Southwestern. You know, so it's, and they're making a statement here in this open drive. Let's see if they can finish it off and put some points on the board. Back in shotgun is Slags. Hands yeah, off to Holcomb. Let's see, based yeah, on Yeah, about spot, five yards yeah, on that four one. To five on the, yards, on the right. shotgun inside handoff. Yeah, looks like uh, they have quite a, quite a big playbook over there on the Portville side. Yeah, and, and, and White hadn't been starting at linebacker, which I understand. They're trying to slow the game down for him a little bit, get him going offensively. But with this drive, it's hard to keep him off the field. Uh, they're going back to four linebackers here, a little bit more 4-4. Four, four. Hit her up. To, oh, stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. So yep. that's it. And that's going to grow again. Yes. Along with, um, looks like big number 79 down there. Ian Story. Yeah. Let's see, he's going to, oh, look at that. Great job by Story. Phil. Oh, no, linebacker, Kata, uh, stepping off the sophomore. Had an, Aiden had a nice first start last week, Pat. He played really well as a sophomore, and he really filled that hole nicely there. Yeah, next man up. He's out there for Sam, so, you know, you got to be out there. It's a team effort there to replace a player like that, so it's nice to... But the young guy's making some plays out there. Uh, looks like they gave him maybe a yard on the play. Counter here, Holcomb is met in the backfield. Nice. Big yeah. play there for the Hillbillies. Yeah. Got grow again in yeah, the backfield. Yeah, big hey. play by the senior there. Here it is. He read that perfectly, the counter. Stepped right into it, held on. Rush and teammates helping him finish off. The loss on the play, loss of one. It's gonna bring a fourth and about six. And if Fredoni can get a stop here, you know, they gave up some yards, a couple big big play, but if they can get a stop here, get their defense off the field, yeah, it'd be that's huge. It would Absolutely. be huge here for the Hillbillies. And you got Slags and shotgun here, and you got trips to the right. First time we've seen that. Lone receiver to the left, rolling right here, looking for a receiver. He's got a guy in the end zone, and it will be a touchdown wow. to number 23, Max DeYo. Great pass by Eli Sleggs there. Little, little, you can see him run. The receiver runs a flag route right there, wide open. 
Yeah, and Fields tried to undercut and un yeah. that and took a bad angle, but I think it was a better throw there, too. It was a, it was a very nice throw. It really and, was. And it looks like Suggs is uh, coming out to kick the field goal here as well, yeah. number 17 out there. Extra point attempt. So great opening drive for the Panthers. Uh, not the start you're looking for if you're a Hillbillies fan tonight. Let's see, snap is down, kick is up, and good. The kid's got a boot. Yeah, making the score, Portville Panthers 7, Fredonia Hillbilly 0, 539 remaining in the first quarter. And Fredonia, once again, before their offense even touches the ball, find themselves down by a touchdown. Yeah, and it was a good drive there by Portville to start off the game. They ran a lot of different plays at the Hillbillies, and... Uh, Looks like they have a decently high-powered offense, but also Russell shows how good Southwestern's D is this year. If, yeah. If both of right. these teams didn't score many points. Right, them, right, right. And yeah, so, I mean, based on what we saw last week, that Southwestern offense looked pretty darn good, and Portville's defense held them to three points. So, you know, the Fredoni offense is going to, I mean, they've scored on everybody so far. Their lowest, you know, point total is right around three touchdowns. And the first two games, they broke 40, touched 40. Yeah, so they, they got to be hungry out there yeah. tonight. They got to come out ready to fight, especially down seven now. They got to. They got to. Got to respond oh, here. Oh, absolutely. And I would expect this to kick to be pretty deep down the field after I saw him kick that field goal. So, Yeah, that's looks like the quarterback kicking for the Panthers. Maybe maybe a game tonight, maybe uh, special teams plays a huge role in the game. Yeah, maybe uh, we get, you know, the hell better. Yeah, make a play. Any, any way you can make a play, without a doubt. And it is a deep kick to Gullo over his head into the end zone. So it will be a touchback. And Ferroni will start uh, their first possession deep into their own zone at the 20-yard line. So the answer is going to take an 80-yard drive. Let's see if there's any changes or adjustments. You know, you got that that offensive line is the key to this team. Uh, now, they, uh, now are we gonna see a little uh, running back by committee, or is they or is it Luke? Luke, it was Luke mainly Gullo Luke, getting a lot of touches. Luke Gullo got a lot of touches last mm -hmm. week. Made some nice runs. They used Jamison Quinn a little bit too. I like to get, that. I, I like him. He can a little Swiss Army knife. Yeah, play absolutely. a couple different positions. And he's gonna be a real key factor Huge here. Key. Now, traditionally, we see trips right empty backfield. If you watch a Fredonia game all year, it's typically a run with white. And now we got motion, and that's not the start you want. And it was going to be a straight run with white. And it will be a false start. Yes, it is against Fredonia. So that's not what you want. Go down 7 nothing in your first offensive play. And that, yep, you see that right there. The guard got off a little bit. There's a few of them, curl. I think. Yeah. But, if, I mean, if there's been a criticism. I, I can't tell you when people that came up, like, they run the same play. The QB draw every time. And they were starting to get, now they've had great success with it. Um, and they were starting out with that play motion here, and they go right back to it with White, and he is going to be stuffed after a gain of four yards. Back, back to the original line of scrimmage. About. Yeah, yep. They're going to give him five. Well, they put it on 20? Yep, well, just shy, but yeah, four to five yards, so almost got the penalty back. Bring up second down and 10. And this time you do have Quinn in the backfield. Gullo's in the slot. So Quinn is right behind White. And they got to get Quinn going. He most explosive player in motion. And it's a handoff to Quinn. And he loses his footing on the Hillbilly turf. No gain on the play. 77. Dayton Shaw, the big nose tackle there. 265 pounds. He's going to get credit for the tackle. And he's... He doesn't look real mobile, but he also looked pretty tough to move on that replay. Yeah, you know, that takes up double teams yeah, when you're not big. So. Absolutely. So now third and ten for the Hillbillies. Ooh, Portville's going to help him out here. Yeah, big mis first mistake really we've seen out of the Panthers. The hard count works well. Good job by the offensive line there staying still. And, and that was the uh, Kate Holcomb coming in. He uh, Trying to time the snap on the blitz. 
from the linebacker position. It's much more manageable. Third and five at your own 25 is much better than third and 10. Yeah, that's gonna. So trips left. You got Quinn in the backfield backfield here and it's going to be leading for white and he is going to have the first down just crossing the 30 yard line so yeah. nice job by the hillbillies overcoming that watch penalty. the replay here quinn makes a great key block on holcomb there able to get able to get white the six yards that he needed yeah and, and good job by white really focus on the ball high and tight and getting that second hand on yeah. the ball He's had a couple key fumbles, carrying the ball a little loose. He's good at falling forward, too. Big body like that, yeah. getting those extra yards. Again, it's going to be, it looks like another offside to see what the officials say. Yep, the hard, hard count working yeah. for him. Offsides against the Panthers, and that's great. You got a team coming at you aggressively. Real smart job chaining up, changing up the cadence, slowing down a little bit. And now you're first and five, and that opens the playbook up wide open. And I see uh, we got wide out. We got uh, Kevin Brown back in the lineup after early on in the year. He was uh, yeah, he, he went out banged up last year. There we go. on the carry. Looks like he's going to, based on that spot, I think he might have a first down. All right, now a few in a row, few in a row, get the chains yeah, going. Absolutely. And get this drive going. Nice momentum here for the Hillbillies. Get a couple going. Things start feeling right. The vibe in the huddle gets up. I love the logos after the replay our crew's got going tonight. Doing a great job as always. Quinn still right behind White. Twins of both sides, Field, Gullo, Han, Everyone. and Brown all out there. Snap handoff to Gullo, or excuse me, mm. Quinn up the middle. Just got tripped up there. I think that was 23, Maxi Yo, or else it could have been some nice Yeah, throw, he but, saw some daylight. Yeah. He wanted it. He wanted it, but he just got tripped up just a little bit. Yeah, gain of well, four, maybe. Yeah, the, the linebacker came this. in and got, him, got his arm out there. So that's, you know, first down though, you get four yards, it's always a positive thing. Second down and six. Empty backfield this time. Linebackers coming up, you got it, he's got a, yeah, picture that it's gonna be the draw, and it is, and gained a, maybe three yards on the play by White. Let's bring up third and short. I'd like to see them use maybe the wide side of the field here. Maybe get a. Yeah, you, you know what they could really do? You, you have White take a step or two forward, like he's gonna mm -hmm, run it. Mm -hmm. Step back, that safety and linebacker is gonna come up, hit a wall quick post. Him, wall him to sleep with yeah, the you, same you, play. You do then that boom. with a post with Gullo on that formation over the middle. Look at the linebackers all coming up here. Hand off to Quinn. Based on the spot, I think he's gonna be just short of the first. And that might have been, and Quinn doesn't like the spot, and I don't think he's necessarily wrong on that. Inside handoff. Yeah, um, his knee was down. Knee. You know what? I, I, I correct myself. I like to give the officials a hard time, but the ball was straight up and down when his knee, saw, and then he fell forward. So that's actually a really good spot by the officials. Is, are they calling for a measurement? Or, yeah, they are calling for a measurement here. I think he might be short, Pat. What do you think? I, I definitely think he's short. I, I agree with you there. His knee was down, but... But even based on this mark, I think, well... He, he looks like he has the 49. Looks like tip of the ball is touching the 49. So it's going to be close. And the chain gang comes out on the field. And let's see, they set the marker, stretch the chains out, and he is gonna be just short. But I would think the Hillbillies here would definitely go for that. It's about a half a yard. Oh yeah, there's no doubt that they're going for it. 
And, uh, you know, I can't predict the future, but maybe a uh, shotgun QB sneak is uh, a decent option. Now, I'm not saying maroon's my favorite color or anything, but Port Bill's helmets are pretty classy. Oh, yeah. They got the maroon with the, the matte black maroon with the, the classy number on the side. I like yeah. that. So, how far I tell you the story, Pat, but I actually, I didn't grow up around here, but mm -hmm. I grew up maroon and white, and we were Delhi, so we had the old English D, and our rivals were black and orange. That's pretty close. We're, yeah, pretty yeah, exactly. close. <laughs> so, it was real tough when I first moved here, play, we're putting on the old yep. white oh. on the keeper, nice cut to the outside. It's going to have a first down and then some. Great play there by White. He, uh... He had the first down, but he made a nice cut to the outside yeah. and got about seven or eight more yards. I mean, I, I, I could have called that play before it started, but oh. if he can't stop it, I guess why not keep calling it in the same note? To, and Coach Paul Vino is not afraid to keep calling the same play until the team stops it. Receivers are stacked in the backfield. Handoff to Quinn. There's Big Quinn. Goal. Quinn. There he goes. He's gone. That's going to be a 40-yard touchdown. Linebackers were pinched up tight at no safety. And wherever, as soon as he got through that line of scrimmage, there was no chance. Watch it here. I mean, there's no, nice. that's a huge hole. I think he goes untouched. Yeah, nice burst of speed there yeah. by Quinn. Great job by the offensive line to Absolutely. create that hole. And boom, he's gone. And uh, let's see, are they going for two here. Yeah, well, you, you mentioned earlier that uh, Azrod is uh, the long snapper, so sometimes you don't have that extra guy. You got to yeah. just go for two. And, and based on the fact that Price came off the field, I don't think he expected them to go for two, but a little different. White's under center here. We have not seen that. Gullo and Quinn are in the backfield. Handoff to Gullo, and I think he's going to be stopped short, and he is. So you had Quinn leading Gullo there. That's an interesting play. And he even had Kada uh, on the wing there lined up. So completely different two-point conversion um, call there. But Ferroni after a nice 80-yard drive. We said it had to be 80 yards. We said they needed to respond to that opening touchdown by the Panthers, and they did. Down by one still, but that's okay. Long way to play. That was an impressive run-it-down-your-throat drive by the Hillbillies. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, we're almost done here with the first first quarter, and there's just been two possessions. Yeah. So both teams doing a nice job on offense so far here. Yeah, much much quicker first quarter than we've been accustomed to, but that's because both teams primarily ran the ball. I don't think there's one a pass attempt by the Hillbillies at all in that drive. And then just uh, two by Portville, yeah. so. And both One of them were the successful, yeah. yeah. So that's actually something to look at. Maybe they look right. for the pass a little more. And we got uh, Aiden Shikansky kicking off. They got, a, they got a few kickers on the team this yeah, year. Yeah, they do. It's been, you know... Uh, Kinnear and Tabone really set the tone the last couple of years. The soccer players coming and having uh, great success kicking for the football team. So that led with four guys that play soccer want to get involved with the football team, which I think is great. You got Schwartz and Chopper back. A short high kick. Fielded by the up back. He's got some room up the middle. That's Holcomb. Dragging fields for almost all the way to midfield. Stopped at about the 48. So nice return by Holcomb there, the up back. Yeah, the senior running back making some plays here tonight. Here it is. He, you know, so good wedge blocking, and he just follows his blockers, and Fields had to hang on to make that tackle. So let's see, and, and Davi White is not out on defense, which, you know, they, I think that it's definitely a noticeable adjustment here. They're trying to use him a little less besides quarterback. Obviously, he's going to be out every snap for quarterback to help the game slow down for White. 
Shotgun formation, handoff up the middle. Holcomb tries to jump through, and Legro had nothing to do with that. Couple big tackles by Legro, the senior, so far tonight. And he shows with the gets up, a little emotion, getting his yeah. team fired up. You love to Caught see him it. right in the air. Oh, and actually, we give Kata some credit there, too. It wasn't just Legro. So both linebackers stepped up. Mm -hmm. After a gain, got four progress gave a gain of one, so it'll be at the 49. But nice job by the two linebackers filling that hole. Yeah, and, they're playing good tonight. Yeah, Kata again. You see the undersized with him and Glavy, both undersized linebackers, but not undersized. And got a pass. Play action. Got a receiver. Ooh. Oh, big drop there. He was wide open. Aiden DeFazio, the sophomore, hit him right in the hands pad. He might have he might have taken that to I the think, house. I, I think he was gone if he catches that. And here I, it is on the replay. We got some great pocket presence there yeah. by Sleg. Yeah, he might have been able to catch him, but if he catches that in stride, that, that's a big break for the Hillbillies. Now it's third and nine. And that's a mistake if you're the Panthers, you can't have. Yeah, it says Slags is at 6'1", but he looks pretty tall and pretty comfortable in that pocket. Yeah. As he comes out in shotgun again. Straight pass here. Drop, screen. Look screen, yo. Hits Holcomb. Gets by the first guy, and he has a convoy with a lot of, oh, we got a penalty behind the play. And this is going to come back. It's against, it looks like Kata got taken to the ground, and that's a big mistake if you're Panthers. That he was nowhere near making a play. Yep. And I don't know if we're going to see it oh, on this replay. No. He's calling a yeah. touchdown. Yeah, it's a touchdown, but it'll come back. And I think it. Yeah, it's going to. The officials are talking about it. But I think the initial block was good. Maybe it was an unnecessary roughness following through. Mm -hmm. And what a mistake here. Holding, though. They're calling holding. And that's the maybe it wasn't the on ball the was, block. The ball yeah. was already passed. Yeah, that's a that's her. two big mistakes. Drop ball and now a penalty on a fifty yard, fifty one yard screen pass for the touchdown. Yeah, that, they they actually ran that. Besides the holding, they ran that screen pass to perfection. They, they definitely they, did. They had a convoy of blockers. The only prop. Fredonia rushed real hard on it as yeah. well, and they just had. There was, and, right. uh, There's one guy that Holcomb had to beat. Holcomb showed did. some speed for the yep. for uh, think of him more as like a little bruiser type running back, but he showed some speed there in the and, open field. That'll bring us to the end of the first score quarter. Seven six Panthers over the Hillbillies, but Hillbillies dodge a bullet there, and now they got to make them pay to start the second quarter, and it's third and long. And if they don't gain even close to the first down, you think Panthers are going to have to punt with the, with the ball being at their own 40, and it's about third and 20. It's a pretty good first quarter, though. A nice, uh, good football game we got going here, Shannon. Yeah, absolutely. It, you know, both teams, you know, Panthers are one in one division. You don't want to go down two losses mm -hmm. themselves if you're looking to make the playoffs and then. You know, Fredonia already has two, but if they lose to Fredonia, it's head-to-head, -head, that would go against the Panthers. So it's a real, real big game early in the season. And what a division uh, we really have. Fredonia had a tough draw in their beginning of the season. You know, minus Salamanca, it, it, who's down a little bit this year so far. I mean, they're playing what appears to be the three best teams in their division. Mm -hmm. With the start this season. Right in a row, right. Now, is it Salamanca's at Silver Creek tonight, I think? Maybe. Uh, yeah, I think you're right mm -hmm. with that, mm -hmm. which should be, uh, unfortunately, no offense, Coach Helmer, but probably a pretty easy win for Salamanca. The Black Knights are still down a little bit, but I'll tell you what, their, their modified team in Silver Creek is really strong last year, and it is again this year, so... Hopefully that'll help turn that program around. Yeah, you got to start them young. You look at Fredonia, how our junior yeah. football is, you know, you got a lot of great numbers, and it really shows Under that. center here, and they go to the counter, and there's nothing there. And a penalty kills drive, so yeah. that, that one really hurt the Panthers there. Yeah, well, the drop ball right before that, and then the penalty. I mean, that could have been two touchdowns yeah. the Panthers could have had, and they end up running a draw in third and 20, and... It's going to have to bring in the punt team on. Jamison Quinn is back to return. And we, it, I guess Luca Gull is going back now, too. 
And uh, they need to get another, okay, the girl's going out wide now. Back to punt is seven. Aiden DeFazio, who had just had that drop. So, you know, keep an eye on that. You had that drop in the back of your mind. Now you got to catch his punt and get it off. So let's we'll see what his composure's like after the sophomore with a big drop himself. Good snap, catches it, and oh. shakes, punt. And it's going to be right around the 41, I'm guessing, for a spot. So Might have been spot on with that one. That uh, drop in the back of his mind. And yeah. now that... And he's, uh, you can tell, hands I, on his head. Yep. You know, game's going a little too fast for him right now. You know, that short-term memory is easy to say, but that eats at you. You know you missed one there. So a break for Fredonia, but they capitalized on it. They made him punt, and they got great field position. Let's see if they can do back-to-back -back drives here and take the lead. Yeah, let's see what the offense uh, Matt Palbino has in store for the offense on series number two. And he got a fresh white out there. He did not play a snap, to my knowledge, on that defensive series for the Hillbillies. Stacked receivers again. And a handoff to Quinn. Very and he's got a lot of room. And he's going to have a first down. And... You know, with no safety out there in Quinn's speed, it's real dangerous. He could break one at any point. Yeah, he's running hard tonight. Another great, into, you know, hand up out of the shotgun. But look at that hole again. Jesus. He's running hard. He's got some good speed out there. Yeah. And that was 23 on the tackle. Max DeYo. So a couple nice adjustments by the coaching staff so far tonight. Another handoff to Quinn. A lot of room to the left side now. And he's hit by 21, Lane Landon Shapaker. I have no idea how to pronounce that name. That smart move. You know, you move the senior, your your best receiver, you move him to tailback, and the kid's running hard. Your, your most explosive yeah. offensive player by far. You, that's that's high school football. Yeah, Give the ball to your best absolutely. athlete. Absolutely. And, and I'm impressed by Quinn that he's running north and south yeah, here, too. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, it's been wide open holes, so it's easy to do. I love that spread offense. You, you see a lot of times a smaller, fast guy, they think, want to try to go everything to the outside, oh, of course, of and course. he's not. He's hitting the holes hard, like you mentioned, and have a great result. Gain of six and first down, second and four. It's going to be it, run by White, and another big the line is really starting to take over this game. Yeah, They yeah. sealed that left edge and gave White a ton of running room there. Let's see it here. Actually, wow, I thought. Well, they argued. I was like. And they gave you Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. The, the box, when at first I looked up at the box, it looked like they were giving a gain of two. I'm like, wait a minute. So another first down for the Hillbillies. And all on the ground. Still no pass attempt right now. And, and I love how they're turning to the offensive line and say, take over this game. And they are. Low stab. Good job by White getting that to Quinn. Oh. Short gain. I mean, it's like right. round four. Yeah, round yeah. four, yeah. Brings up second down. Second and. Let's see. Ball is at. Look at right to line scrimmage, too. It's about the 26. It's advantage of having uh, all the plays right there on your wrist. Quinn still behind White. Hard count this time. Looking over to get the play, got trips right. Mike Hahn, the lone receiver here. I mean, you don't need to, but he's got a height advantage. He could take a shot here in the end zone. A big handoff to Quinn, and why not? That left side, and he's not touched until he's got a first down. The corner's the first guy to touch Quinn from the fifth. So again, that left side and of the line. Yep. And moving Who's, on again, you can see here, the yeah. left of the line, Story, Price. All making Who's some good seal. Who's still out there tackling? All making know, good seal blocks. If Han could have hold his block a little back more, that's a touchdown. Yeah, but Story and Who's the last couple of plays have really done a nice job on the left side, sealing that off. Empty backfield now. Trips right. Twins left. You see a run? Yeah, it is. Look at that. Oh, a big goes. hole, and he is in for the touchdown. Davi White, 
a nice run. Quinn and White ran the ball real nice, but the line blocked even better yeah. in that possession. Yeah, that they was They absolutely the dominated. He's not touched until the six yard line. He breaks a tackle yep. and drags the other two in. Great run there by Davi White. And a, and a fresh and White, a little bit, you know, He's not huffing and puffing. Yeah, you got to take some calmer. series off. You got to take some series off on our oh, defense, and it shows there on offense yep. that he's ready to go. Once again, Fredoni's going to go for two. This time it's Quinn in the backfield, and White's going to keep it again, and he is going to be in, I believe. Yep. And yes, he is, and that'll make the score. Fredonia 14, Portville 7, 8-15 left in the second quarter. Yeah, that was, you know, it goes back to that penalty and that drop pass. Yeah. Peroni gets the ball back. They go down and score, and now they're up by a touchdown. So yeah, we'll see what Fredoni does on the kickoff here because they've had two different kickers. One went out of bounds. One went short. So we'll see what happens here. Yeah, I'm guessing, especially if Portville will just take it to 35, you kick it out of bounds. Why give those returns a chance to return it? Yeah. Kick it along tight along the sideline. If it rolls out, so be it. If it doesn't roll out, you got them pinned back in the corner. And let the coverage team go and make a nice tackle. Oh, a little sweet Caroline by the marching yeah. band. A sporting event classic. Yeah. Ah, and the fans are loving it too. Nice little crowd here tonight on a beautiful Friday night. Oh, look at this. Number 24, Charles Dominico. And we're on to the third kickoff. Uh, uh, yeah. Maybe they're doing... Maybe... Uh, <laughs> Is kicking off for... Fredonia, I believe it's his first kickoff of the year. And then they still got one more kicker, too. They got um, yeah. Sullivan Linzer out there as well as another kicker, uh, 22. So maybe he'll come out next. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my guess would be is you're looking for a different style kick yep, here. Yeah, that, that's, you know. that's, that's what, exactly what I was thinking. An ugly squib uh, tight kick here is what I'm uh, expecting, but let's see what the coaching staff has drawn up. A little line drive kick. Oh, oh it splits him. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Feels right around the Make three a yard line and great coverage there by the Hillbillies. So. Glavy and Hahn in on the tackle. Gullo there as well. Great kick by Charles Dominico. Number 24 splits the Red Sea. Little miscommunication on the returners. Yeah, I don't know if that's what he was planning on doing, yeah. but it worked out. Absolutely. And then uh, got Glavy came in, made a great play as he gets up. Always an emotional leader out there getting, uh, yeah, getting the crowd going, getting his real. teammates going tough 13 yard line you can't pin much team back much more on a kickoff than that so now what are the panthers made of they had a nice opening drive they missed an opportunity too for a touchdown their second drive now they're down for the first time today can they respond starting in the shotgun is slags and he is going to do a quick oh! hit, and it is picked off what a play there. Is that, is that Quinn? Yep. Jameson Great play. Jameson Quinn jumping the hitch. Here it is. And a little floater, and he goes up and gets it. And good job by the receiver, preventing Quinn from returning that for a touchdown. But a big play now on defense for Quinn. That's great two-way play right there. And that's going to give Fredonia excellent field position. Now, a lot of people are, are giving Ben Legro in the sideline the, like high fives and things. Like, it might have been Legro making that interception. I and mean, if he did, I want to give him credit for it. But I don't know. We'll have to get clarification later on who made that interception. But it might have been five and nine look pretty similar from far away. So it might have been Legro. We'll see. 
Quinn or White hands it off to Quinn. Quinn and spins in. in. He is in for the touchdown. So big turn events here. A little bit like what Southwestern did to the Hillbillies last week. The Hillbillies are now doing to the Panthers, scoring quick and in many different ways. And that. And that's, how you, and that's how you go in for the kill. You get the turnover right away, you go in and score on the next play. Get, get your teammates going, get the crowd going, and now they're gonna be going for two again here. Yeah. And I'm trying to... Quinn gets the handoff, and he is gonna be stopped short this time. Mm. Good stick tackle no there, way. stopping him in his tracks. So after the failed two point conversion attempt, Fredonia goes up 20 to seven to Portville, 7.58 here in the first, or excuse me, second quarter, first half. Well, whoever had that interception, it yeah, was a huge, it was a huge play. play. I was Absolutely. trying to. And I, I agree. I thought it was Quinn at first too, but the way everyone was meeting Legro on the sidelines made me question that. We will we'll confirm that at halftime. Uh, but either way, it's a huge play, and Quinn gets a touchdown afterwards. If it wasn't him on the interception, so it's a big play. And that that throw was a little slow by Slags. It it was okay. Jackson's confirming from the um, it's not the studio that it was Quinn looking back at the video. Um, so we were right. But either way, the, the announcers are always yeah, right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> the players in the sidelines were confused, maybe. I don't well, know. Well, maybe he was in there on, uh, in on the he, quarterback. He was in hit, on the, know. could be. He was in on the special teams tackle. Was the grow to pin him back there. So... Definitely was Maybe relevant he is play. teammates are just good teammates. Yeah. Wanted to give him a it high five, be. you know? It could be. And Domenico is going to come back out. Uh, White is on the kickoff here, which I, is interesting. I, just, I did notice that. He's containing the edge here. Yeah. But, and let's see. Another kick. This time it's going to be fielded right around the 22, 23. He's got some room. That's Holcomb. He's got one guy to beat, and Fields is able to push him out of bounds. Whoa, whoa. Oh, and Fields is going to get a late hit penalty I here. Think, I think so, or no? I, we'll see what we'll see what the call is. Yeah, but there is a little bit on both. Let's see in the replay what happens. But a real nice return here by Holcomb. Good wedge oh, blocking. Attack. Domenico almost hit on the tackle. So Watch here's here Fields. At the end. He's. Oh, maybe it's it on might, Holcomb it for might throwing be on Holcomb. Fields down. Yeah. And that was after the play. So we've had some interesting plays right along that area to, <laughs> so far this season. So it, it should not. Fields did nothing wrong there. He, he was just there, and Holcomb kind of grabbed him and threw he, him yeah, down. Yeah, gave him the. The Josh Allen and stiff arm see. to the fountain. Oh. No, they are calling that on the defense, which I honestly. I, I think that's a no call of anything. It, but, I mean, if a defender did that to the offensive player, grab him, throw him down, flag. it's an automatic flag. You don't see that often, but Holcomb was really the aggressor there, yeah, it looked I, like. I, uh, that, that was uh, not the, the right call. I, I, so here it is again, and you see Holcomb what just... What did Fields do? He had his hand on his back, but he didn't... I mean, they were just going out, and maybe the officials just saw it wrong, but I, I can't disagree with that call more. You know, players going down that late out of bounds, you're going to automatically maybe assume it's the guy making the tackle, and that maybe is what the official did in his brain, but when he watches that back, and he doesn't have... Jackson Hickey to show in the replay that we yeah, have I, Pat, <laughs> and, and our viewers got to see and, and coach Sherlock and they had we all get a the view coaches. on him he is not happy about that call and he's 
definitely talking to the officials about it. And I will say the officials are, are, are taking it and explaining a little bit and giving him his time. But uh, I think that's the wrong call. I don't think Sherlock's going to change the call here. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if uh, if it coaches everyone in argument yeah. after the play, but yeah. uh, <laughs> you might get the next call. Yeah, you know, you got to give him your two cents right in the ear. And there it is again, and he just is thrown down, and 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 that gives the Portville Panthers they got a very good field, of very it, good yes. field position, and uh, another different formation here. So this is back on, you got like a trip. trip to the left. Wing type formation, it's a counter back this way. Great job by, oh. oh. Ooh, nice, and we got a flag late too. It's a nice job by the Grove holding. stopping that. And it is gonna be holding against the Panthers. But what a job here, look about the Fredonia defense stringing this play out. But that was a real nice cut. Kate ahead of oh, nice tackle there by LeGrow. Yeah, he's having a nice game. That stopped it. Uh, Coleman, the senior running back, in his tracks. The play won't count, but that's a real nice yeah. finish by LeGrow there. Kata's instincts have been really good tonight. Yeah. He's hitting the holes good. He's just got, he, when he's right there, he's just got to make the play. Yeah, and honestly, to me, he was one of the uh, bright sides of an ugly loss last week getting his first start. I thought he played a real nice game and a, and a tough game to play in. Time out here at Hillbillies. And Pat, I know you're a Braves fan. I'm gonna give Ronald Acuna a little shout out. My son just texted me. He just hit his 40th home run. Be the first ever player, 40 home yep, runs just, and 60 stolen bases in one season. Yeah, he if just he doesn't three win the steals. MVP this year, I, I, I'm gonna have a little issue with that. It, honestly, if he loses, it better be to Olson, who leads <laughs> the major runs league and RBIs. in home runs and. Who's having a great and year RBS. for the Braves, too, yeah? <laughs> yeah, it's been a fun summer watching baseball. Yeah, I hope they can finish this season off. But, uh, you know, it's tough. October is just a few weeks I away. Know, the, I old, know. the old fall classic. But the thing I'm a little worried about is, yeah, you get a little break and get your guys healthy. Freed went in the DL today because he had a blister. But it's yeah. nice to be able to let him let his finger heal for the playoffs. But when you're playing some meaningless baseball for a while, sometimes it's hard to turn that switch back on. Yeah, they, they won the division and they lost four games in a row. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. It's tough to keep your mind out. Right, but, right. But so, uh, you got to have, you got to get hot at the right time like they did a couple years yeah, ago when they won the World Series. Yeah, there's a, some good teams in the American oh, League too, so it's going to be, it's going to be a nice uh, postseason. Fronia really crowding the line of scrimmage. The deepest guy is three yards from it. Hand off here. He's got oh. the outside and a lot of room. One guy to beat can go and get Holcomb. He cannot. And he is going to score on another nice run by Holcomb. He's a real nice player for the Panthers. Yeah, he, he knows how to hit the gaps and use the angles to get around the players in the open field. It was, Look see at the here, big lineman he breaks the, there. Yeah. breaks the tackle here almost. And Glavy was really untouched. the only one. Glavy got sucked in there a little bit to basically kind of giving him that edge and all that space to beat him. Yeah, he's your classic southern tier running back. Yeah, yeah. You know, so a, little, a little shorter, a little stockier, but he's got some speed. Slugs on to attempt the extra point, and his kick is good, and then some. Oh, oh did it hit? Almost, almost got the girl from behind. Almost got a fan not paying attention. Oh, there's a flag, though. There is a flag here. Hold on. Let's see what is going on. And this could be an interesting call. Offsides on Fredonia. So what do you do here if you're Portville? Do you take the extra point? I think you can choose to force it on the kickoff. Now what a lot of people do is you get that one extra yard. So why not? Two, why right. not go for two? You know, you can uh, do the old absolutely. QB sneak, but but they're already only down by six, and now if they with making it, you know, even at six points, just a straight touchdown gives them 
the lead, well, no, I'm sorry, it's on the scoreboard is 20 to 14 with the extra point. So let's see what they choose to do. Officials are still talking here too, like they're trying to figure out. Um, let's see, they are, looks like they're gonna respot it half the distance to the goal. Maybe they're gonna go for two, like you mentioned is a possibility. And I, I, I don't know, honestly, because at 20 to 14, the way Slakes can kick it, it's almost a automatic that they take the lead, but I mean, they could end up, it could be 20 to 13 or 20 to 15. I think I take the point here and, and uh, keep the momentum myself. There's not a real advantage, I don't think, of getting two with this score. And then if you don't get it, you lose some momentum too, so. It's a gutsy call if that's what he chooses. And, and I don't know, maybe he's not. The whole offense seems to be walking the way. Looks like they're going to come out and maybe try to punch punch it in for two. Offsides on the defense, and they're going to replay. They're not the, the clients, so they are going to go for two. And I don't know. I, I, I personally don't agree with this, but what do I know? I'm just up here in the booth. Even if you get it, I don't see the real advantage. So the score is really 20 to 13 right now. The extra point didn't count. And now there's yeah, some Yeah, they confusion. are going to be going for it for two. So this is a huge play by Fredoni's defense. Yeah. Uh, they can get a stop here. Right, and you get momentum back after giving up a big kickoff return and a long run. You make a stop here, and all of a sudden you got momentum. You got a stacked eye. Power formation here. Slags under center gives it to Holcomb. Mega putt. And he is he gonna give it to him? He does. What a second effort by Holcomb there to stretch out over it. Glavy hit him and I love to see the replay on this to see if we can see if his knee is down or not. But he really stretches out. Glavy hits him in the backfield, dragging, and he he is he in. He yeah, what an effort by Holcomb to get into that end zone there. Because he was hit about the four yard line on that. So now it's 20 to 15. Six points gives him the lead. I, but I, that's a big risk here by the Panthers coach on that call. But it paid off. Coach Sherlock is I still think giving he's, a earful to the officials over here. Still, uh, talking about that uh, play on the sideline there that gave them an extra 15 yards earlier. Yeah. And that was a big call, and I, I think it was the wrong call. I think you see the players going to the ground that late. You assume it's the guy making the tackle, not the guy carrying mm -hmm, the ball. Mm -hmm. And he might not. I, you know, he's running from behind at an angle, so maybe he didn't see, just saw bodies fly. So he's just, oh, that's a late hit on yeah. on Fields, and makes that call automatically. But I don't think Field All deserved right. that. Yeah, we got uh, Quinn and Gullo back again, and we got Sleggs out there to kick off. And it's going to be a short kickoff, and Quinn oh, is yeah. going to field it on the run Almost at the 20. Almost full speed. And he's got room. And he's going to be caught from behind. The kicker, Sleggs, made him make a cut in 21, hustling from behind. Landon Shapaker making a big tackle, but that's a real nice return, about a 28-yard return for Quinn. Yeah, he here. caught that almost. Full speed. And a jog, yeah. And if nice. he just could have got, nice block there by Keita, and he, Slags doesn't slow him down, he's gone. I'd like him to switch that ball into his left hand, and cut mm. to the side. So, so great field's position here for Fredonia. You got trips left with Han, Field, and Gullo. And then you got Han all by himself no, out Han's there. over here. That's, oh, Brown. Yep, Brown, that's Brown. Brown. And it's going to go up the middle to Quinn. Nice run there on first down. Nice gain into Panther territory. Yeah, and another nice north to south cut. Oh, he comes up uh, a little gingerly, though. Yeah, it's... A lot of things can happen in between the tackles. Ankles get twisted. A lot of contact that you know you're you're not that body's not used to. He's a receiver in space and a great one. 
But he's had a heck of a game so far yeah, tonight. Yeah, he's going to be. Oh, it's going to be go. White again. That edge is sealed to the left side. And White is going to get the first down. Yeah. And Quinn's checking Quinn, out Quinn's here. Gonna, yep, he's going to take one here. We'll have to keep an eye on that. They cannot afford to lose Etra in. Glavy comes out to play. Oh. Gullo's going to go in the backfield. Glavy's going to go to receiver. I'm seeing what they're working on down there. And it seems to be a lower leg injury. Yeah, you're right, Pat. It is a nice crowd here by the locals. The Orange Bowl is, is such Portville a has a little crowd over there as well. And that's a long drive from Portville. Oh, fumble. Oh, and, and, oh good job by... And the snap was low, and, and White would have been better top. off. If you watch this, he tries to almost toss it to Gullo. He's just got to see that slow, he bobbles it. He just needs to keep it and, and go at that point. And what a heads-up play there. I believe that's Simon Price with a huge fumble recovery. But that's experience yeah, there. Like, that, you the know, handoff's late, just hang on the ball. And even if you lose a yard rushing, it's a lot better turning it over. I know he bobbled the snap, but the timing was off because yeah. Gullo is the first series him in the backfield. That, that too. Hey, of course, it, that, that happens all the time with and timing. And, and Quinn's right back in. Yeah, so I, I, I think he needed just a little breather. Yeah. Trips right. Quinn back behind White. He's going to go right back to him here, and they do. A nice hole up the middle. Ooh, got popped pretty good. 33 was the first to hit him. Ethan Coleman. All right, so we got Third down, they're back to around the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, so right around it, maybe. No, it's, a dude, are we, it's definitely fourth down territory as well. So sure. I was going to say maybe we see a pass here, but I have a feeling they're going to stick to the running out of the shotgun. Yeah, you know, empty backfield. They've had a lot of success on this, the left side. But now the end's really widening out here. See that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To kind of stop that hard count. Panthers don't fall for it this time. Pavino's now putting in the real play. And it is White is going to keep it, but good job by Kustel. Oh, he might have got it. And cut it. He cut right inside that wide end for a nice run. So good Ooh. read by White. Where's it going to be? I think he's just short. calling for it. Oh, first down. The, the far side official had him for sure. And I thought the. Yeah, so. That was a good job by Coosdale taking advantage of the defender being so wide, and White read that block perfectly there and cut right up inside of him. Empty Another, backfield yep. again. And they do. Coosdale seals the edge this time. Ooh. Dobby White has a blow on... Uh, Portfield defender. Yeah, Aiden DeFazio learned how big and strong the quarterback really is here. Ball's in the wrong hand, like you keep pointing out, though. Boom. But he lowers that <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> but you're right, White wants to get that ball in the outside arm to protect it from the defense. Not only not only is it away, the ball is away from the defender, you're able to use your right hand block off defender. Stiff arm, absolutely. Um, some players aren't comfortable carrying it in only one hand, so you do see that even the NFL. So they only always carry it, but and you use your you use your other hand on the nose. You move yep. it right over. Yeah, little rollover. It's a it's a drill that you've seen for years by backs and receivers running, cutting, rolling the ball over. Second and two, White again. Lead block by Quinn. I don't. Good effort here. Yeah, you got about oh, three. sorry, it's not second two, it's second eight. You two got, yards on first down. And he got another three there maybe when it looked like it was going to be none. So wait a yeah. nice effort to get a couple more extra yards. 100%. Third and five here. Clock's running. Plenty of time, though. Three and a half minutes left in the quarter. we about three and a half when they snap the ball. Quinn still in the backfield. Trips right. And it goes to Quinn this time, and he, he's lucky that that wasn't fumbled. And honestly, Panthers lucky that the second hit there, 58, didn't get called, and Quinn is down. He got hit hard. This could have been a win, but I can't believe he didn't fumble this. 
that comes in on the blitz, and he's out. And then that late hit there, that could have been called. 58 jumping on the pile. I, but that was a perfectly timed blitz there, and, and that's going to bring a fourth down now. Loss of about three, but more importantly, you know, hoping maybe just the wind got knocked out of him. But it, it's hard. It kind of looks like that. It was it was kind of in the mid mid range of where he got hit. But you know, there's no better no better person to be out there than his dad out there, uh, <laughs> Coach Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about yeah, better good. people. Look at these two. Get a little Look face time. Oh, TV yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah. Representing the Bills as always, Pat. Another big game this weekend down in Washington. Yeah, Commanders, they're 2-0, and oh, but... You Bills. know, going in before Miami, um, got to get another win you before you can't be going... Yeah, you can't be going in um, having the home game against Miami, a very good team so far. Quinn so. is up now. He looks... I, I think it was a win, win yeah. knocked out situation. And that, that's... That's a terrible feeling. And we, yeah, we don't want to lose. For air. The Hillbillies can't afford to lose Quinn no, either. So no. He's walking off with a little confidence. But that was a big hit and a big play there by the Panthers defense there. I think that was 33, wasn't it? Coleman on no, that? No, it, yep, it was Holcomb again. It was 36, oh, 36 on the hit. Holcomb. He's all over he's the place. He's had a great game, too. Yeah, I've been impressed by his uh, game tonight. Two, Really, those two have been the best two players on the field mm -hmm. tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Couple seniors in the final whole ride, making every every game worth it, you know. So Glavy is in for uh, Quinn, but they're going empty backfield here, fourth and seven. I want him. Gutsy to... called it to a QB draw on this one. I want to see him throw it to I, one of I these I think this receivers. might be the first time. Yep, first pass attempt. It's going to be a short to Brown and easily tackle. Loss on the play by number eleven, all over that hitch pass. That's Noah Brown talk, tackling Kevin Brown. And Kevin Brown's first catch of the day. And that's going to be a turnover and downs. It wasn't a straight hitch call. He was looking downfield, but Noah Brown was all over that and made a nice open field tackle. So that's a big stop if you're Panthers. Yeah, I saw Glavy had, had an in and out. It's open down the sideline, but it's tough, tough play there. Yeah, and it makes it. If Quinn hadn't have got hurt, that would have been Quinn running that route instead of Glavy. And maybe, so maybe he, he looks a, maybe he looks at five because yeah, he's yeah, his exactly, number one guy. He's five, right? He's the guy. White back in on defense now. All right. Real five left in the half. Let's yeah. see if Panthers can do something because Fredonia will get the ball to start the second half. Rolling out Ooh, right, I, lots of time. He's got room now. He's going to keep it. And he's going to, oh, that might be a late hit, too. Let's see. Ah. Yeah. It came out, and I can't see exactly where the sideline is. That's an experience right there. Yeah, and that's an extra 15 yards on top of that. Let's see. If, I don't know if the cameras will be able to see the sidelines either. It was but, a push, but he was definitely, it was definitely late. Yeah, you, you why, if he's out of bounds, oh, he's out of bounds. And you, and you, you can't yeah. make that play. He took, no a se he took a second to... To throw that flag, I thought he wasn't going to, but it was very obviously that it was a late hit there. And you know that you live and you learn from that one. But you, you, when you see that quarterback go to the side, and you got to pull up, and that's yeah. on every level because they're all these officials are trying to protect their quarterbacks. Right. And, and, the, and you can see Slake's head; he was conceding. He is slowing down, going out of bounds. So it's just there's no there's and that's no need for that. huge for these Panthers on offense yeah. with 2:55 left now. Now they have it first and ten in the hillbilly 48, and that's the right call. That those are type of plays that you know gives football a bad name. There's no need for that. Play hard, play physical, but inside the lines. Yeah. So we'll see if the Panthers can capitalize, and a touchdown would give them the lead. So at one point, it looked like Fredoni was going to kind of take over this game after that interception and third touchdown. But Panthers are battling back in it. Slags and shotgun is going to hand off to Holcomb. I don't like how he jumps at the line of scrimmage. That's a bad idea. Ooh, that's dangerously late there, too. And there's a flag there. And now it's going to get backed I think up. That, that might be on Holcomb. He got up. 
on Sports from Light on home and that, that retaliation, here it is. I mean, there, it was, see that jumping there doesn't do him any good. No. Now, we can't hear the whistle, but that is after the whistle there, and he was upset about it, and I don't know, he didn't, his Story was finishing him. the play, Story was yeah. finishing the play. That's, I think they're trying to keep the game under control there, because mm -hmm. honestly, his player stopped him before he touch him. I don't know what he said. Maybe he said something really he bad. Gave him, he gave him uh, There was some jaw moving. Yeah, I, he, he gave him, you know, the business. So we'll... And, yeah. that, and, and that's a big mistake on Holcomb right back. And now, I mean, they lose the yardage and the down. Because that's going to be after the play. So See. I believe it's going to be second down. Because that happened after the play, right? I mean, so I don't think it's going to be replay of the down. Let's see. They're talking... Oh, he's talking to the coach over there, and he's probably saying they threw him down late, which is borderline. Right. He's, you know, he's making the tackle as the whistle's getting yeah. blown. Um, it's also tough to stop that. Too, yeah, it when is. You're that, in the middle of a tackle, when you hear the whistle, but also, you know, the violence. Fredonia, get, the Fredonia gets gets a late. Call. Fredonia gets a late call on the sophomore. Yep. You know, yep. inexperienced, but yeah. he, Holcomb's a senior. Yeah. He, he's he's the dude for the Panthers. So you expect a little bit more composure for. I don't understand how this is first down though, because that was after the play. So to I me, agree. it should be second down. I I I think that's wrong. That play was clearly after the play. They're winding the clock. I mean. It, it's, I disagree with that, but it's, that's a little bit of a break for Panthers. Certainly I'd like to be explained why it's still first down. And now the officials are stopping it. Maybe they're going to talk about it right now. It's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, and the, the coaching staff's asking for second down. Okay. Hey, announcers are right again, Pat. Nice job there, <laughs> Shannon. Nice job. So now the clock is running. Hey, good job by, well, the coaches remind the officials. Sykes back in shotgun. They're going to go back to Holcomb. And he cuts up. He's got one. Now he's hopping. Why is he hopping? Still on his feet. And Fields makes a tackle at the touchdown. But there's this jumping with the ball. There's no need for that. But nice run. Watch this. Like when he jumps, there's no one even near him. Another. <laughs> there was a little. Uh, <laughs> it's his instinct to do that, and that's gonna hurt him sometime here. He's gonna pay for that. He has once. So big run by Holcomb. He's gotta be close to 100 yards here in the first half, if not over it. Clock still running. Slate's taking his time here. Getting the call from the sideline. Inside two minutes here. And they're going to call a timeout here with 152 left. Wow, that's that's a waste if, if you're Portville. And I believe, is that their second call timeout? Yeah, Holcomb's been very good at, you know, they get a couple of the hands. A couple hands get on him in the backfield, and he's able yeah, to get yeah. past those hand tackles. He's very good at breaking hand tackles. So if you're Fredonia, you got to break down. And and you get your shoulder. To the gotta ball. get your shoulder pads, and involved in the tackle and making sure that uh, you you know someone grabs and the rest of the team comes in. Yeah, it. Yo, you're right. He's breaking those arm tackles in. There's a lot of one-on-one -on -one tackles. The, you don't see the swarming to the ball defense that mm -hmm. we've seen so often. The hillbillies the last few years. It's usually a lot of one-on-one -on -one in space, and yeah. Holcomb's too good for that. And I hate to say it, you know, without uh. Azrod out there, yeah, that you know, he, he's one of those leader at uh, those black helmets swarming the ball. It, it is a big, big playmaker on defense, no doubt about it. And, you know, they are, White is not out there. He was out there a few snaps, so they're trying to use Davi White, one of their better linebackers too, sparingly, and Azrod's not there. And I, again, I agree with using him sparingly, because it makes him a better quarterback. Shotgun. Fake. Pump. And they... Oh, oh, wow. That was pretty good coverage by Quinn. That was a great throw. And yeah. honestly, that was catchable. I think that went right off his hands. Just out of reach. You can see, see. Shotgun gives him a pump fake there. The up and out to 
Beautiful throw and ball to 33, and it's uh, just out of his reach. Yeah, that's tough. That's it would have been a very tough play. Yes. Great play, but yep. that was a nice throw by Sex. That was dead on, yeah. And, and Quinn actually, to his credit, had good coverage. Yeah, especially he with the pump fake, he stayed with his yeah. receiver and was with him downfield. That's one of my favorite favorite little plays there. Yeah. The Get him with the hitch and the up and out. I love that play. And, you know, in first down, why not take that shot? It's only four down territory, so they still have three downs to get the first. 146 remaining. Incomplete pass. Didn't stop the clock. Back to Holcomb, and the Fredonia defense is ready for that. Uh. But he still breaks away, and it's going to be tackled out of bounds for Quinn. But it's going to be another first down, and it's going to stop the clock going out of bounds. Holcomb is... Almost untackable right, untackable right now. And he wants a late hit on that one now, but that too. Wasn't. He's complaining right now the to the ref. Story had a chance there and just ran through another arm tackle. He's a, having a real nice half so far. And great replay there. Great job by our crew once again. Yeah, there's some chippy chippy plays going on in the back between the two of them. There. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I don't think that was definitely not a late hit. Quinn just finishing his tackle there. Made contact inbounds. And they got first down, minute yeah. th minute 39 left in the half. Yeah, that first down Porto's, took six seconds. Yeah, they're <laughs> making they're making some plays right now. They're uh, driving down the field. And they're getting shotgun now. So he's going to go right back to Holcomb. He's going to try to bounce. He gets by Rush. He's got it. Can he get around the edge on Quinn? He does. It gets out of bounds. Smart play to get out. And it's not easy to get out, get away from Rush on the end and get outside of Quinn. Those are two outstanding defensive players. Here it is. Rush does a nice job. Can't quite make the tackle. And nice block there by seven. DeFazio. And, and Holcomb reads both those blocks perfectly. It's a great run once again. He's feeling it right now. What, look at this one wide receiver way all by himself, Gullo alone, but they're going right back to Holcomb, and who can blame him? He's still on his feet. Oh. No! Simon Price is able to bring him down for a loss, and Holcomb's exhausted. Got up slow there, and I think that's just pure exhaustion. And he's going to the sidelines to take this playoff. Clock still running. Second and 14. That's a real nice play by Price coming up with a big tackle there. Yeah, huge tackle to uh, and they're taking keep the clock going forever as well. to get this play in and get lined up even. Maybe they feel comfortable uh, running yeah. it down so everyone doesn't get the ball back. And this time they're oh he's Better. oh he gets away there. Nice cut, another missed tackle, still on his feet, and he's going to get out of bounds and stop the clock. And the Fredonia Hillbillies cannot tackle a Panther running back tonight. Yeah, time that's... after time. This play was completely jammed up. Great penetration. Looks like a little hole right, there. Missed tackle there. Missed tackle there. Missed tackle Miss... there. And, yeah, and, he... and that's senior running back, Ethan Coleman, who comes in to replace Holcomb, and then he has a great run as well. And you can see some frustration out yeah. there for the hillbillies. You know, they're they're in the right spots that they have yeah. to be on, but they're not making the play right yeah, now. Yeah, they did everything right except finish that play. The, the penetration was there. The containment was there. The pursuit was there. The tackle wasn't. And the, the, these are good players that are missing oh, these tackles, 100%. too. 100%. So. Yeah, you, you got to give, you know, you, you criticize, you see a missed tackle, but sometimes backs just force that too you know give these guys Holcomb and um, Coleman some credit for running the ball their feet are just moving constantly and they're running through those arm tackles 40 seconds left second and three I think I, and I'm assuming the hillbillies might have called a timeout here it's third and three Oh, sorry, I was reading second quarter. Third yeah, third and three. And three. So right. This is going to be a big, big uh, defensive uh, play here by the Hillbillies. We'll see uh, yeah. 
Well, thanks for pointing that out. I saw quarter two, down three, distance three. So well, that had second, all to three. do with yeah. uh, But it's right, that was because of Price's tackle for a loss mm -hmm. on first down. Obviously, it's four down territory, but you get tackled and bounced. Well, here. they the clock's do. going to be running. They too. got sleds who can kick a field goal. So, yeah, you right under center. They got fumble. Oh, he almost and now if a Holcomb or Coleman bounces to the outside, mm. White gets the tackle. I think but they're calling him down. The ball came loose. Officials point to the ground right there. I think and they that's got a, the first I down. I do too. I do too, and that's going to stop the clock. You want to get right to line of scrimmage if you're Portville with was, 28 seconds left. You can left. see here, he almost First fumbles and, the ball. And great play there by White he, to make was, the tackle. He was down, yeah, White. But they do get the first down, so yep, it's going to be first and goal with uh, 28 seconds left. You would expect officials to be starting the clock here soon. Coaches out there talking. I think they're seeing if they're going to call a timeout or not. And that that's got that's their last one, I believe. So I don't I don't know if I why call a timeout there. If you don't know what you're gonna do, you can spike it. Yeah. And then you saw three downs and a timeout left. You get tackled and bounced now with no timeouts left, which I believe is correct. They don't have any timeouts left. I uh, I think that's a bad clock management there at that timeout. The clock was stopped anyway. Get to line of scrimmage and at least spike it or hand it off and if you don't get it then call your timeout. Yeah, well, I mean, this has been a, a little bit of old school football. Yeah, a lot of uh, running play. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of running plays. And you good know, hard running yeah, by both yeah, teams. I, you know, White and, and Quinn on the hillbilly side, and Holcomb and Coleman having great games for the Panthers. And uh, yeah, Fredoni's out there digging deep, getting their team ready to see what they're made of here. Yeah. Oh, they did give them two more seconds left, so they got 30 seconds left before half. Yep. You know, I, I don't necessarily understand that timeout, though. Obviously, you got to call multiple plays in this huddle, right? Especially if you're running the ball. But you get tackled inbounds, shy of the end zone. High school team, you, you got to get to that line of scrimmage and know what you're doing. And you gotta assume Holcomb's getting the ball here. Oh, well he's, oh, they go oh, with the. It's a direct snap, Coleman got it. Play. Another break, can he get to the edge? And he does! Touchdown, Portville. And, and what a effort by Coleman on that. He was fully stretched out as you're gonna see. Holcomb's lead. Holcomb stopped though, kind of wasted his block. Another missed tackle in the backfield. And he is going to dive and oh, get yeah, over. Yep. Gets it. Yep. I mean, good play Holcomb there by Coleman. almost cost Coleman there. That was a terrible. He, he stopped running to block someone not in the play, but it didn't matter. Now you have. And now why not go for two on. here? I, what? I, yeah, I, don't, I really don't understand why they oh, went. High snap. Kick is up and good with 23 seconds left in the half. Portville takes the lead back after. So they were up 7-0, Fredonia 7-6. Fredonia scores two more, really three touchdowns in a row. Good job by the holder there. Brenton Aarons getting that ball down. You, like you said, it was a high snap. But just a recap here. So Portville opening drive goes down and scores, 7-0. Fredonia drives, scores, 7-6, failed two-point conversion. Then Fredonia scores the next two touchdowns, taking a two-touchdown lead. But now Portville comes storming back, scores two touchdowns in the in a row, retaking the lead with 23 seconds left. Fredonia yeah. does get the ball to start the second half. Yeah, though. that's huge. And uh, obviously, you know, they're going to make some adjustments at half. Well, we hope they make some adjustments at half. So we'll uh, see where they go here. But yeah, remember uh, last time, a little short pooch kick. Or no, it didn't mean to be, but it was a shorter kick. And uh, James had a Quinn had a nice return. So. Yeah, if I'm doing anything, I'm kicking I, it away from him. Yes, <laughs> if you if you give Quinn a chance to return, turn this kick, it's a big mistake. And if you notice, they've done this a few times now. That Quinn and Gullo are both standing together in the middle of the field, and then they separate as they're kicking. But they oh. kick it short, 
to field. field. Go, go. And he is going to be tackled right around the 33-yard right, line. All right, play. You don't want to yeah. do anything. Don't yeah. want to do anything to lose the ball, but uh, we'll see. And that, if that hesitation, I heard you yelling, go, go. <laughs> you can't stop running on a kickoff return. I, I, I've i made that mistake returning kickoff. As soon as you lose momentum and speed with all those guys running yeah, at you, Yeah, he kind of knew it to go over. down. Yeah. He, <laughs> knew, he knew it to go down once. But what do you do here if you're Coach Balvino? 18 seconds, you're down by two. And you've got some distance to go. You right. do have timeouts, but... Do you maybe get one big chunk, but then you don't want to turn the ball over yes. either. Yes, and, and, and the reason I'm asking that, they had a stop in the second game of the year. They had been dominated the whole first half. They had a big stop, ball inside the five, end of the half. They came out of the end zone throwing and threw a pick six, mm. going back down by two touchdowns before the half. Yeah, yeah that's, so that, that kind of makes my point. Be. You don't want to turn the ball over. Right. It looks well, like they are going to make a Go. At least they're not line taking up a knee shot here. Up. Yeah, and White is going to throw the ball. He's taking a shot at Quinn. Why not? Great coverage there by 27. Really pushing him towards that uh, Cole. Threw it just a little too early. Kiesler, though, had great, great coverage. Yeah, he was, he was throwing it to a spot, and I think yeah. he wanted to, if he would have just held it for one more second, we'd Quinn uh, to get out in the open. I think he would have had a better chance to get the completion. So uh, that takes five seconds off the clock, though. So not. It looks like they're going to give it one more Quinn go. back in the backfield here. So you think maybe they're. Mm, and look yep. at this Portville defense. They got three deep safeties, only three defensive linemen. You can't see the whole field, but the safeties are all the way back at the 35 yard line. And they just hand it off to Quinn in space. You know, that's a great tackle. Whoa. That's a dangerous tackle, too. Rolling up behind, not dirty or anything, but. Quinn got his legs rolled up from behind, and that that hurts. That's and that is gonna bring us to the he end of the, the first half. He saw the open field. He wanted it. Yeah. yeah, that was actually sophomore linebacker, defensive back, Jake Ziegler. I uh, saw, saw a pretty big body down there in the field, and uh, he makes a nice play on it. When you get rolled up from behind like that, knees and ankles are easily twisted, and, and Quinn Quinn's <laughs> had a great first half, but he's taking a beating too. And that'll bring us to the end of the first half. Again, 22-20. Um, we'll try to get some yeah, stats. Yeah, I'll, I'll go and, get some uh, stats for us. Okay, and come back here to do a halftime show. So stay tuned, and we will be back for our halftime show. Thank you. Thank you. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. Remember the best planned 90 minutes of your life? Or that surprise party for your parents' golden anniversary? You get the golden planning. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make.
Okay, we are back for our halftime show. I'm Shannon Davis along my side, Pat Mahaney, and quite the first half, Pat. Yeah, it was a nice, a nice competitive football game. A lot of action back and forth, a couple lead changes. You know, both teams are out here fighting to not go down, you know, to get this league match on Friday Night Lights. So it's uh, been an exciting football game. As you see, senior uh, doing a little everything. Uh, Jameson, Quinn. Jameson Quinn as he breaks a touchdown there. And as uh, we're watching some of the plays, he got Dobby White going in here, rushing the ball here for another touchdown. Um, Dobby White actually has, in the first half stats, Dobby White quarterback, he has 10 rushes for 65 yards and a touchdown. And he threw two passes. He went one for two, negative three yards. So not much going on in the passing game there. But And then Jameson Quinn has 13 carries for 103 yards and two wow. touchdowns on the ground. So he had himself a nice first half. And he, and he had to remember, folks, and he had... He had an interception, and on the next play, he scored a touchdown. So, and you can see here um, a huge run here by Holcomb. Portville's running back, senior running back Holcomb, number 36, on a nice, uh, nice long run there. And we don't have Portville. I, I, but I, but I bet he might have more yards than Quinn. Right, I would say the he's definitely over the century mark on the yards there for sure. So, like, it's going to be a nice second half here. Um, you know, Fredonia's going to have to make some adjustments, but. Portville's probably doing the same exact thing. So um, we're going to have a nice little exciting matchup here in the, the second half here and uh, down here at the Orange Bowl. Yeah, so, so, so what are some keys? I was kind of thinking about, especially this Fredonia defense, how how can they, what adjustments can they make? Because mm -hmm, it seems mm -hmm. like they're getting in decent position, just can't make the tackle. It goes back to, uh, to coaching and what they preach, and that's fundamentals and, you know, Breaking down, making sure you're wrapping up, wrapping up, holding the guy so that the other guy can come and make help you make that tackle. Team tackling, helmets to the ball, flying to the ball. And one of the things I think might help them too, Pat, is is better angles. I think their their players are going for the big negative play, mm -hmm. and that's kind of forcing some more stress and bad angles and more of an arm tackle. Where if they just string that out and work them to the sideline, stay in more closer line of scrim scrimmage, giving their teammates help time to catch up and swarm to the ball like you mentioned, I think that would be a real good adjustment as well. But give give Holcomb and Coleman some credit because they've run the ball real well. Uh, but Feronia just gave up to lead it to half, but they get the ball back to start the second yeah, half. Yeah, that's huge that they get the ball here, so we'll see what they can do here. Uh, and here goes Slakes kicking off, line ooh. drive, and they kick it towards Quinn again, which I just don't understand. Right around the 15-yard line, get some room along the sideline. At least they kept them pinned to the sideline, but that's a chance I'm still not taking. I don't make Gullo or make one of the upbacks return it. Don't let Quinn return it here. And it's nice to see, by the way, after getting rolled up on, I was he looks all right. I was actually, it was on the tip of my tongue, I was just going to say that Quinn shows a lot of toughness in the first half. We've mentioned it before. He's usually their number one wide receiver, but with uh, senior Azra uh, being out, he's, uh, you know, next man up. He's stepped up. They moved him to the tailback, and he's had himself a phenomenal game. And, so. and, you know, I mean, it's down the road. They got to win this game, but... That might be a nice one-two combo using both of them in the backfield mm -hmm, to help keep mm -hmm. each other fresh in the future. But first, they got to win them. this game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially with both of them playing defense as well. Absolutely. Trips left, empty backfield. White's going to keep it, and he does. There's an early pre-snap penalty here. I'm guessing it's going to be a false start that they stopped the play. And that's exactly, I believe, how Fredonia started their first possession of the first game is a false start. So... But again, what a job they're sealing that edge, that end of, of Portfield's getting sucked in. There was some running room there if it wasn't for that false start. So it'll be first and 15. And you know, I, Tyler Kuzdil's having a great game out there at left tackle. Same formation here. You want to bet it's the same play? <laughs> what do you think, Pat? Yeah. And it is. And the cut back. Yeah, and that was forced there. If you're going to look, if we see the replay, 33, Ethan Coleman almost blitzed at the end. Kind of like almost a spill te technique there, forcing White. And here he is to see him coming from the slot. White can't go the outside. 
and forces him back in the middle. So that was a good play by Coleman. Nothing on the stat sheet, but he really sealed that edge and forced White into traffic. Gain of about three on the play, yeah. second and long. If you're poor, oh, you got to know that's Coleman, and you have to contain the outside. And once again, they're... Uh, Trips right this time. Empty backfield is going to go to the there air. Pass the fields. Can he get almost breaks him? He's still on his feet out to midfield. You think they blow the, blow whistle, the whistle by now, really? And that, like, that's when late hits happen. That's when pushing and, and personal fouls, or worst case here, someone gets hurt. Blow the whistle. Play was over. And that's Fredonia uh, from Muir's pass. Fredonia's bread and butter. The shotgun quick slant to the inside receiver. So, uh, I'm pleased to see that uh, yeah. out oh, there that's a working. Big play. So, and uh, yeah, yeah while well, I'm to sleep, while well, I'm to sleep, throw the slant. Yep. And you get that. It, it looked they're playing. I mean, the deepest guy is five yards off the ball. No huddle, obviously. Yeah, go yep. right up to the line. Empty backfield once again. And they're going right back to air. This time White was looking for Quinn, and he's able to gain a yard. He almost got sacked there. And uh, he double pumped it there. He's looking to his right. I think he's trying to hit Quinn on to the quick slant. Let's see. Yeah, that's where he was looking. Got pressure from Holcomb. I was able to gain a yard. Good job getting back and avoiding the sack there. Yeah, at least he got back to the line of scrimmage or even a, a yard. So, And maybe that's the adjustment for Donia is making. They're looking to pass a little more. Yeah, mix it up a little bit. I, you know, and that loosens that defense up. They're obviously cheating for the run with such almost 200 yards rushing in the first Ooh. half. And that's going to be the hard count. We've seen that a couple times, and that's a big mistake by the Panther defensive line. And they're, they're giving up size here against that Fredoni offensive line. And, you know, we talk about the backs having such good first half running. The offensive line of Fredonia dominated that first half. Absolutely dominated and giving huge running lanes play after play. Yeah, it's a veteran group out there a lot of, and they uh, work well together. Yeah, four of the five starters from last year are back. Multiple guys have been starting for three years. White on the keeper. And he's going to be stopped just... Oh. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. The fire receiver keeps giving us a better spot. The, I'm sorry, the fire referee keeps giving uh, us a better spot. And he is going to be short. Officials mm, calling that short. I think they're going to bring the... Well, if the, the chain is, if it's on the other side of the line, then it's obvious. Are they saying it's not touching the line? I don't know. It's fourth or third and inches here. No shotgun under center, typically. If we've seen that once all year. So you're not going to see the patented QB sneak wedge that we're seeing in the NFL these mm -hmm, days. Mm -hmm. The Eagles run it every other play, it seems yeah. like. Better than anyone. Of course, you're following Jason Kelsey. It's easy to do. Sweep to the outside, a little different. Quinn cuts it up. He's going to have the first. But that was pretty well defended. We, we know how dangerous Quinn is in open space. 33, Coleman makes a nice tackle, but not before Hillbilly. Yeah, that was a down. nice play by Queen. He was able he uh, able to cut it back. He knew how much he had to get, so when the time was right, he was able to cut it up. First down, ball right the 39-yard line. And uh, looks like got Quinn in the backfield, trips right. And I, I to my knowledge, just tonight's going to be Quinn's first 100-yard rushing game. He's had receiving games. Never rushing. Out to Han. Mm. Little miscommunication. Looks like Han broke in and Davi threw it like he was going to break out no, or fade, fade. there. Yeah, yeah. That, and the, I, that's what I've been wanting all game. <laughs> and then they finally run it and a little miscommunication. Well, so. and you know, and Han, yeah, another yeah. basketball player like Jay Hawk did yep. for the Hillbillies last year. Those jump balls and, and controlling the body in the air he got so good at towards the end of the season. They're trying to recreate that with Han this year. Yeah. Another very good basketball you know, player. Yeah, Han's specialty on the court, though, is that corner three. You three, you oh, no yeah. doubt about it. <laughs> but he gets hot. I believe he had the most threes. In White on the keeper in Western New York. But look at that line just pushing back. It doesn't look like anything's there, but they're going to gain two, three yards just by pushing the pile back. So it's going to be third and long. And what do you do here? You're in two down territory, so you don't have to panic. You don't have to 
call a seven yard play, you could call yeah, three, four, it, or five yard well, play. Well, it looks like they're uh, coming out with the empty backfield. I was hoping for maybe another uh, inside or sweep right with Quinn, but. Uh, yeah, they're going to go back to slant, but I, I'm going to guess QB run here personally. And they don't have a safety uh, out it's there. It's going to be either. a slant. Time. And the oh. pass is broken off, intended for Glavy. That's 21. Landon Shapaker, very nice coverage and there. And Glavy wants the pass. Yeah, let's take a look. The guy hops oh. the route pretty quick. I think it's a pretty good play. He's so now we maybe got with the down. outside hand. Yeah, but. I don't know. I, we couldn't see it downfield enough on that replay. So now it is fourth down, fourth and seven. Empty backfield. I think you got to throw it here. Trying to hard count. Didn't work this time, but not a bad call there. You get it off sides, it's fourth and two all of a sudden. So Pavino now, and the, and the defender switched around a little bit after they set. Here is the slash, attended four fields, falls incomplete. And it is going to be a turnover on downs um, on this opening drive for the Hillbillies. Looked they had something going, but they couldn't finish the drive. And now Panthers will get their first possession in the second half. Yeah, it, uh, they they had it going, uh, and a uh, couple a uh, couple missed intercept, uh, incomplete passes stalled the drive, and yeah. uh, they turned the ball around downs. Does hurt the Hillbillies a little bit, but uh, they look here to. Uh, that would have been a tough catch for Fields in the replay. And, 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 and it was high, and I, I think he, he was might have been short of the. If he caught it, you know, he was going to have to make, get some yak yards. Uh, uh, so uh, it, it was a little high, and I think he might have put a little too much mustard on it, too, going through the receiver's hand. Um, but you're amped up like that. We've seen a lot of quarterbacks do that over the year. Look at this Fredonia defense. They're all hugging that line of scrimmage. Hand off to Holcomb up the middle. Good there job go. there. Kato, a story, rush, all in on the tackle there. Oh, guys, the, oh, oh. I story was down. I, I, I know, I wasn't quite sure. It's taking an extra break, extra few seconds, you know. Well, that's good defense there. It's one of the better defensive team efforts. You talk about swarming to the ball mm -hmm, pad, there mm -hmm. it was. There's three or oh, five. Oh, and there's a flag, a little laundry out on the field. They're gonna get backed up. On yeah, did that just happen? Yeah, it was all, It was after the play on necessary roughness on um, on the Portbo Panthers. Oh, that's an emotional mistake there. I don't know. Can we? They've had been a few of them tonight. Yeah. Do you have a replay of that, Jackson? I didn't see it happen. Okay. No, we don't have it, but. Whatever, that's a huge, huge mistake. Now, you gotta be careful. You almost have to hand it off just so you don't get a turnover. Here yeah, they are. It was, it was a loss of maybe five on the play, and then it's another, another 15. So they're yeah. they're second and 30 right now. 25, second and 25. And then, oh, they're going play, play action. They're gonna take a shot over the middle. He's got a guy. He hit him. Quinn is with him, he's at the 40 looking for a block. He's got one, now it's a foot race at Fields and he's gonna go all the way for a Panther touchdown from their own 21 yard, that's a 79 yard touchdown pass at second and 25. And uh, the Hillbillies are looking around, a little confusion in there, but a great play by Eli Sweggs there, play action stays. Perfect throw. Throws in it right, and, uh, right to Aiden DeFonzio, who had a drop. The sophomore receiver had a drop in the first half, and he comes back with a great catch and run there. You know, I thought Quinn was going to get him around the 40-30, yeah. and he made a little move to get closer to the sideline and then was able to get go the rest and of the way. Let's give number 12, Henry Schwartz, senior wide receiver, hustling up and making a block, stopping Quinn from being able to make that tackle. Oh, oh, Slevs misses the extra point. That could be something to look 20. at. Like, yeah, I, don't, I think that was, I think he just missed, kicked it. I don't think that was blocked. I, I think he just changed And that's it. actually, could be huge looking yeah. forward because it's still a one-point game. Or one score one game. One score game, one score game. Oh, yep, he hit a, 
Yeah, and, and you're, you're absolutely, that's a great point because if he makes that extra point, you they would go up by nine to score a game. Now a touchdown two-point conversion can tie it. So no, and Purple has all the momentum after that huge catch and pass there. So it, it Perdonia, the Blues are going to have to dig deep and uh, come back here on a nice offensive play. Now, I... I it, Quinn was there. It was just, yeah, it was just a great pass by Eli Seggs. But I mean, he hit him in. Stride. The other thing is, there's no safety help, so he's out. That. He's out there on an island, yeah. and he, it, there, it, you have to make a perfect play out right there yeah. as a defender. There's One, almost nothing you can do if you're yes. went on a perfect pass. But that's the effect of the running game. You said that was effective. Fredonia's running game opened up the pass mm -hmm. a little bit when Holcomb and Coleman are able to run the ball so much. Your five yard, Fredoni's entire 11 defenders were no deeper than five yards. Yeah. You're playing one on one, no safety, no deep coverage, no deep help. Your every pass defender is on an island when you play that kind of defense. But you have to, or else you can't stop the run. So it's that's a nice little combo. And here's Slags kicking off again, and he goes back to Quinn. I just, still blows my mind. And Quinn has it now. And good coverage there that time by the Panthers. Not yeah. much there, but I still don't understand why you would possibly kick it to that man. Yeah, good coverage by Portfield. Fredonia's going to get the ball at the 27-yard line, looking to bounce back after a turnover on downs on their last possession. So we'll see what Coach Matt Pavino and quarterback Davi White can draw up here on this series. Yeah, they... and. and how are they going to respond? You know, again, we there's a, so much talent on this team, but they lost so like much leadership in the last two years. Um, not to mention talent the last two years with so much leadership. And how do you react to things like that? Now White is up limping a yeah, little he, bit he, himself. He, he uh, jogged out a little gingerly on that one, I noticed. So we'll see if that has any effect on the running game tonight in the second half. There and we go. Off to Quinn, and he's hit in the backfield. Oh, and the, he's, I don't know if he got hit in the shin or thigh or something himself, but the guy that made the tackle is coming up with, I think it's 32, uh, Breckham Hunt, come on a blitz right out the middle and, and yep. gave Quinn no chance. But you, you bring up, there's no safety help for any of these Portville DBs either. Oh, Holcomb backed up a little bit now. But with these trips left, empty backfield, and White's going to the air, hit, no, pass ball's incomplete, intended for Fields a little behind him. Now you have third and long. And can they make a play like the Panthers did at second and 25? And this, and that's where it kind of hurts the Hobbits right now. When they go to the passing game, their number one receiver's in the backfield, so. Yeah. That time is empty, but you're right. Like if you're, and he's tired. Like he's taking the beating today, and it's hard to keep responding play after play with that. Looks like they're bringing the blitz pressure off the edge here. Both ends standing out, gonna bring five, and they do. White's back to pass, but he's got, oh, he's overthrew him. He might've had Quinn to the sidelines. Um, if he threw a little bit more towards us, mm -hmm. right around the 40-45, Looked like Quinn might have had a chance, but he overthrew him, and it's going to bring out the punting the pun. unit. They're going to have to punt here, yeah. It looks like Davi White is, we haven't seen this yet, but it looks like Davi White is uh, going to be the punter, and that just made me think of something. Is Bryce Bacher not here tonight? Oh, he is, 55. We haven't seen him in the game much, and he was the punter and played a lot of defensive end last week. He punted the first three games. And he is on the side, I don't know if he's hurt or a little bit of change there in strategy, but this is the uh, only second punt we've seen all game, first by the Hillbillies, I believe. Oh, and they're still short a player. Oh, could that no. be a penalty? No, they didn't. Oh, nice punt oh, by White. Booming wow. way over Coleman's head. He's going to play it on the hop right around the 32. He's got some room. Still on his feet. Field takes him down, but not before. 
He gets out to about the 43, 44 yard, yeah, yard line of the Hillbillies. That's over a, another classic case where he almost might have out punted the coverage. Absolutely. It was such a nice punt. And, uh, but they were able to have a decent return to get inside, get into their, uh, their own territory. But you got so many of these guys, and I know Portville does too, but so many of these guys playing both ways. You can see it starting to wear on some of these hillbillies. Yeah, as, as White, they, they White got stays a, out at their yeah. linebacker. I think at this point, he's one of the fresher guys on defense. I got uh, back to Holcomb. Holcomb probably should have taken that. Oh, the ball oh. loose. No, no, it, it, it almost looked like it. It almost looked like it. Yeah. Looked like it. But that's, that's a great job by Rush there. Sorry to cut you off. No, no, you're fine. I, another uh, defensive player I haven't seen too much tonight is Profit. I, I haven't seen him much out there on defense no, as well. No, the ball was loose, so Holcomb was able to fall on it. I think Holcomb tried to bounce that out one too many times where he might have been able to gain a few yards up the middle, but we haven't seen that run out of him. It's every run's been bouncing to the outside, and, and there was nothing there The end Owen Rush. And then you had Kata in there making another play, cleaning up the mess. Lost a two on the play. Sykes under center, eye formation to the up back this time. Another good job now. Oh. He dragged him for yeah. three, four yards. He Great did. play by uh, the running back. Coleman. But you're right. He did definitely push him back a couple yards. Or drive through. Gain of, they might have got four yards there, Pat, uh, on third down, but or second down. Now it's third and 12, though. Simon Price comes off holding his right elbow, which he's the center. So that could be catastrophic for the Hillbillies, too. Ooh. Almost jumped off, but he did not. We have perfect angle right here in front of a story. Did not jump off. It was very close. As Portfolio looks for the play from their side. And, get, yep. and here, Coach Sherlock screaming out. Jordan Sherlock, watch the wheel route here. And the handoff to Holcomb, but there is, oh. I believe that was LeGrow in there first. Yup, great play there. Rush came in and also... Uh, Let's take a look at that. It was yep. LeGrow that came in from the middle linebacker spot. Stood him up first, rushed there to help. White coming in. And that's what you want. You yes. need three guys on every tackle, especially, oh, and that's a huge play yes, for Fredonia's defense. Right after a three and out, they come back, they make Portville go three and out after a great punt return, and now they're gonna get the ball back, only down one score. Great defensive stand, exactly what they need. DeFazio, only punted once and he was not a very good one last time shanked it off the side of his foot and went about 15 yards so we'll see what happens here Quinn is back on the return all by himself Much better punt here, and Quinn is away, not going to be able Ooh. to return that. Takes a decent bounce. Yeah, and pinned him back inside right around the 12-yard line. I can see it. the technique, though, on the punt. He threw it up in the air. It's probably why he was able to shank it uh, yeah, on right. that You're first one. You want to hold, hold it as long as you can until it hits the foot. Just kind of a slight drop, right? Mm -hmm. You don't, yeah, you toss it up in the air. There's so much room so yeah. for, for air, but he, he made good contact on that one. But now can Fredon respond? Down by eight, plenty of time, 231 in the third quarter. And as the, the Hillbillies offense comes out, they, uh, Quinn, Quinn behind in the backfield. White, you know, See if they can get that running game going again. Yeah. And that's what they're doing. Hand off to Quinn. He's going to got there a big go. move to the outside. Holcomb was able to get him. Mm, I really thought he I was going to get the it. whole edge myself. Yeah, I was looking at the next level, and all of a sudden Holcomb had it. Let me see. Here we have it again. It's a good job. A nice hole on the right side. I think he should have went for I, it. I think he should have kept going, too. Holcomb might have caught him. But uh, he was inside him. There was definitely not room for But still. Still, great, a, for, great first down of, play. Yeah, yeah. 
But I, I was thinking he might go all the way when he first got that ball and hit the line of scrimmage. That the danger of Quinn's speed is. Oh, good block by Quinn on that, and it, he was lucky to get back to line of scrimmage. And Quinn is still down. He took a shot yeah, on that. The yeah. blitzing linebacker came in. He's gonna need an ice bath That's after this Oakland, game. I think. Too. Yeah, I think so too. And boom. Kids I mean, a, he did his kids job. A bruiser. I've been impressed by his game tonight, offensive end. He is not afraid of contact, that is for sure. So now it's third. I bet he wrestles. Yeah. <laughs> third and one here. Went with the hard count, nothing there. Portville stayed on sides this time. Quinn behind White, and Quinn's going to get the ball up the middle, and I believe he's going to have a first down. He was owed a bobble on the handoff, but uh, Quinn was able to secure it, and it looks like he's going to have to. Yeah, I, I think they should give him a breather here. He's he's the body mannerisms. He's coming off. You're, I think you have to at this point. And as uh, ball is going to come out and replace him here. Yeah, that's not good. He is holding his head. Um, and you never want to see that. Not, I lost him. Um, Who are you looking for? Quinn. Quinn, he's on the bench down here with Chad. Oh, Coach God. Mason yep. taking a look at him. Again, no trainer here to take a look at him. I think there might be a doctor down there, man. <laughs> Sir. Oh. So was this a false no, delay game? After having to sub Quinn out, and now it's first and 15. So you get the first down, and then you end up with a delay game penalty. It's just, both teams just seem to be making some really bad mistakes tonight. Who's it going to cost the most in the end? White's got it. Paul is deflected. It's going to be intercepted by Holcomb. And Fields was lucky to get a hold of him. I thought it was going to be a pick six after he caught that. And Fields is shaking up after making that tackle. But another turnover here. Ball is deflected. Oh, by the 68. Big tall end, Nick Monroe. The senior defensive end jumped off. You know, that you can't. It's hard to criticize White for that play. The defensive end, he's tall and he timed the jump perfectly and tipped it up in the air for a big interception by Holcomb. And now. Fredonia is in danger of going down by two scores with 15 seconds left in the third quarter. Yeah, he got he got um he got lucky. Field didn't get a penalty on that tackle. It was high. Well, um, yeah, it's like a clothesline. Yeah, high tackle. Uh, but I thought he was definitely. I thought it was going to be a pick six too. So yeah. um, we'll see what the deep pass has to make a stop now here for the Hillbillies. I bet they're going to go right back to Holcomb, and they do. And he does run up in the t between the tackles here, and he's tripped up. I'm not sure who made that tackle. That was a nice tackle there, as Holcomb was going full steam ahead. And that's going to bring us to the end of the third quarter. And uh, we have a little special treat here for you between the quarters. So we got the Fredonia Midget League out here. Highlights. Love to see this. Fredonia in their new uniform. Man, this kid's got swagger. Yeah. Different logo. Not sure why we do that, but... That is a hillbilly logo of a different. So, oh, nice cut there for the touchdown. Man, it brings back a lot. Oh, there's oh. a pass play. Look at that. You don't see that too often on that. Oh, a lot of good memories. Watch well for me. We didn't have it in football. I, I, uh, I didn't start to modify myself. Okay. So well, watching my boys play and coaching, even some of these kids out here, uh, coach and watch play since they were that big, and it's. It's so cool to see the little kids running around, being ball boy and at the game, proud with their jersey, you know that, and that's the future, right? You, you want that connection. Between oh, there's number eight. The Just saw, there. There's oh, eight. There he yeah, is he out did. there spinning the ball <laughs> on the sidelines. Because yeah, I did that. <laughs> uh, but good job by Jackson Hickey putting that together um, and giving some credit to the crowd and Cody Decker and Cooper. 
Stanger doing a nice job. Three-man crew here today. And Chip who? Chip's not here tonight. And the guys are doing a great job yeah. without him. But that's all. That's delegation. Yeah, they yeah, always do a great job. I've been real impressed by uh, by uh, the crew yeah. and uh, yeah, the they, technology that they've been able to do here. It's a lot better than uh, just a you, you can few tell years ago. Yeah, it's yeah. really uh, the next level stuff. So they, they make us look good. So you know they're doing a darn good job. Pat. Yeah, especially <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. So. <laughs> but uh, here we go. We got the hillbillies. Got uh, Start second and one. They got uh, a, a penalty. Second. Gave them five extra yards. So oh. Now what's going on? A timeout. Oh, you oh. hate to see it. The timeout to start the quarter. Yeah, yeah. That's. But on the other hand, if something's about to go really wrong from Portville, this touchdown is huge. Or this score, even a field goal would be two yeah, scores. Yeah, that would be, and that and that's a victory if you hold them to a field goal here. But I if think you're Fergoni, yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I'm a little nervous about the about um number five down there uh, on his re-entry back into the game. I yeah. think they might have to put him in the, uh, the, the what they call in the NFL the protocol because <laughs> uh, he, he it happened, I think, when he made the block. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And then he went in and then he took one more handoff and then that's when he had to come out. So Yeah. Um, and, and you don't. And, and we're, obviously we hope he's all right, and, but we don't want anything more to occur yeah you, know? you don't want to risk something what further injury mm -hmm. um in a situation like that head injuries are they're so hard to diagnose especially by just coaches um here's the snap holcomb's gonna get the carry tries to bounce the outside owen rush head but he gets away that is unbelievable run here is it a touchdown it is wow owen rush one of the strongest High school lineman, I know, had him in his grass, and he gets away. That's incredible there. Sorry, that was Ian's story. Also, a horse, he gets away, just keeps motoring, gets the sideline, and scores to go up two. What, what a run there. Yeah, that was a hell of a play, heck of a play by uh, Caden Holcomb there. He... Uh, He's been the MVP of the game tonight and uh, also just found out that his father's been standing right in yeah. front of us all game. So he's going to have a nice highlight reel to take home for tonight. Yeah, absolutely. He's over in the danger zone. Not afraid of the Fredonia fans over here, huh, Dad? <laughs> oh, they're going for two. The oh, we had a guy. I think the holder, I wasn't paying attention, to be honest with you. I, well, was that a bad snap, or? Yeah, here we go. Oh, no, it was just straight little wildcat action. The Fazio, and he had two guys wide open. He, he just him, missed just them, yeah. So they went for two, because that would have put them up. They're up 14 already. Two puts them up 16, which is two touchdowns and two point Once conversions. Once again, a little. I, I don't mind that as much as going for it last time. Here, you go up 16, that's even that much more pressure. You, you kick the field goal, though, you're up 15. That is true. Then you only need one extra point. So, yeah, it's I, – I, I get this one more than when they did it last time. That, to me, didn't give them – and after the offside penalty, um, they got it. But I didn't think that gave them the advantage they were looking for. But that one, 16 points. So, that's something. They got to stop, but they got to get a drive going. They got to give this defense a rest. You know, you know they they have to because Holcomb is, is been a horse and Coleman too, just having great games out there and wearing this Fredonia defense out. Yeah, and uh, with Quinn now being out, Ezra was already out with shoulder injury, yeah. so the, the, they got you know, Davi White over with his hands on his knees too, over here on the side. It, it's with his. He might have. Uh, you know. He's got his uh, chest protector uh, on buckle too, so maybe uh, some type of a midsection got his uh, wind knocked out of him. Maybe on the last play. But yeah, there, there's a, a lot of sore bodies out there, and here's the kickoff. Gullo in fields back, field replace. Um, Quinn, he's got it. Tries to get to the outside, cuts back in. Better get down. 33 yard line for the Hillbillies. 
And got... I, I don't know if White's going back in the game either. He's not grabbing his helmet. It doesn't look like it, Pat. And uh, Quinn. Oh, Quinn. no, he's buckling up. All right, Atzrod just got him his helmet. And I just saw Quinn take off his shoulder pad, so it looks like he's going to be done for yeah, the night. And, and I, I hate to see it, but I think that's the it's, absolute it's, right it's move. Absolutely. Even just you cannot mess around or, or risk the head injury returning to the game and getting hit again. Oh, you yeah. You cannot well, risk that. White's limping pretty good out there, and also... I saw Gullo also limping a little bit too. So the so the hillbillies have been bitten by the injury bug. Yeah, and that that can decimate and they got, any and team. And they got Gullo out there, so yep. maybe they can try to use some of his speed. Get to yep. the outside. This Just game's not nice over run. yet. You no, know? it's not. White's going to the air. Hits field. There you go. Makes a nice cut, and is met by Holcomb and driven back. That kid must squat. <laughs> 400 pounds. Uh, and Field is now slow getting up after getting driven back and hitting the turf hard. And well, here it is. He, you know, Holcomb just stood him up and then he got some help for his teammate. And Field went to the ground hard on that play. You know, that, that's one of those things. Maybe you blow the whistle a little sooner. You see the guy getting driven back, but that did happen pretty fast. And, I see. and he's still. Looks like they're going to be bringing in Brennan Lincoln's coming in. Davi's down to two. He keeps going down in the squat position, trying to catch his breath, or I think it's a, maybe a chest injury. Is still down. They're yeah, checking him out out there. It. Yeah, um, it's it. Yeah, I kind of almost think it's another head injury. The way maybe is he, he did fall back. The, the you whiplash know. Yes. of uh, the tackle, and he might have hit his head on the ground. Right, and, uh, half the concussions actually are in the in football do come from your back hits the ground, and then your head just hits off the turf real hard. Yeah, yeah you're right. That whipping back uh, to a. That was uh, absolutely, uh, yeah. You know, last year when we're famous, he he did. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. Being actually there, he is he's getting up, which is good to see. It does look a? Are they holding his arm or? We need to. Oh, like, he's a little woozy. Yeah. Well, we used to have Doc Bishop down on. The, yeah, no. Down on the field, at least to to do to at least maybe monitor some head injuries or something. Right. So you'd think maybe a. Uh, now the school is paying the Fredonia Fire Department to be here. That the Fredonia Fire Department said. Maybe they know, get the EMTs not, over here. Right. Maybe? It I don't might know. be a time to get some. You know, look at these guys. But, I, you know, community rally here in in. in your taxes go up a little bit. Get an athletic trainer here at Fredonia Hillbillies to protect all these kids in, in all sports. You need trained officials on the field to protect our kids. It, it's it's a no-brainer. There's no money that's not worth that. Davi, a little miscommunication with the new back here, and he has to just keep it, and he is going to be tackled in the backfield. Again, you brought it up earlier. You change running backs. And it, Dobby's hurt. Uh, yeah. I think they should get him out of the game as well. I, I, at the problem, I'm not sure who they put in at quarterback. <laughs> they take him out. Because, yeah, see, total, I don't know who was wrong, but Gullo went one way, Dobby turned the other. And I think a concerned parent yeah. over here as well about field and the head injury. Right, and getting. She's running to go get the ambulance. Ball's on the ground, and Holcomb does recover. 
And Dobby's and, uh, and down now. still he, down, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they uh, just announced there for a uh, little medical attention here, and now another yeah. enemy. Uh, and this is the unfortunate part of uh, the great sport of football is the injuries. You know, you're seeing it right now on the in the NFL. A lot of these great, great players are getting hurt for yeah. the season, and. Yeah, no, you just, you just it, hate to see a good you game. We were watching a real good game tonight, and these injuries are just really hurting us. It's right. piling up, yeah. And when you, you when you get you, your bodies get exhausted, and you, you become more acceptable to injury as well. Um, but it, it is an unfortunate part of, of really any sport. Actually, I, I believe there's more concussions in soccer and even cheerleading than even football. Believe it or not, but it, it's it can happen in any sport and I see my man officer Rob Tracy down on the field as well coming to yeah. give an extra hand right in the I think field head is, has a head injury yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised and I honestly it's hard you know we're, we're obviously not doctors by any means and we're way I play one on TV yeah you're right I just say to Holiday and Express last night though <laughs> and it uh, looks like they're going to be bringing in a couple extra. Well, they're going to have to. It's I don't know. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize a student got hurt in the bleachers. Also, I just heard someone on the radio say, um, and maybe that's why Coach Kackemeyer came over. Uh, the school resource officers over there in that area. This, a lot of things are happening right now, Pat. And well, Dobby is still down. on the field, you know. Really, really down right now. I think I'm, I'm really nervous for his injury. I'm hoping it's not ahead as well. But it looked like his chest. Yeah, he's been holding. And, and, well, you saw, you mentioned he had his uh, rib, rib cage un, yeah. un, uh, buttoned, trying to get some deep breaths in. Before he went back out there. And we just, we know it's silent right now. Here's a replay of the fumble. We, we just, we don't know exactly what's going on. And that was like, Davi White was laying on the ground without even the ball there. And he was jumped on by a Portville player. And even if he thought he had the ball, he's obviously down. Um, and that's what some of the people are yelling about, a late hit penalty. And it looks like an EMT is going out to the field now, which I don't understand why it, it they were over here. Why didn't you go out sooner? You're the only trained officials here. Like, go take a look. <laughs> at yeah, the kid. I, like, it, it's it, it seems like in just out of being good Samaritan, you'd want to go out and, and give a hand. I mean, coaches are you know, oh, they go to first aid classes and see. I've been to those classes. They're good, but by no means is a coach a trained medical official. Mm -hmm. the, it's it's such a hard situation to be in as a coach you you want to do what's best you're obviously emotionally in the game so it's it's hard to be totally subjective and you're you, you took a 10-hour first aid course and that's it that's your training Didn't really get a great look at what happened to, to Davion White. 
And there still is a, a student down over in the student section. I don't know if they overheated or, or passed out. I, I mean, no idea. I see uh, they're, like, waving air over whoever that is over there. Um, I mean, here's, here's the replay again. The snap went right through White's hands. And right here, 58, what, what is... I think it's... And and this is tough too. When I think they need to get the ambulance out here, and then the another EMT comes out onto the field, and he is Dobby is moving his arms. I think. It might be a neck injury. And you just hate to see all this going on. Not only uh, you're worried about the the well-being and the health of the players, but it just in the fans. It, <laughs> it it just it absolutely destroys any type of momentum in this game as well. It just. It's been a really well, hard, fought, excuse me, football game, and, and you know, kind of takes away from that. It does take a lot away from that. And yeah, like you said, a second ambulance is coming here. Luckily, the fire hall is literally right around the corner. Hopefully, they don't drive out in the field and get stuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do not like the look of this. You can, you can hear a pin drop around here, folks. Yeah, it's there, 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 this vibe is a lot of concerned people on both sides. You know, the Portville players are all taking a knee here and just, you know, hoping for the best, too.
And they're bringing the stretcher out here for uh, Dobby White. Looks like they're going to be very uh, all precautions and make sure that he's getting safe off the field. I personally think it might have been his neck when the guy, when the extra player came. But that, uh, yeah, I mean, and it could be. It's it's so hard to tell. Um, you know, we don't want to freak anyone out either because we have no <laughs> medical uh, experience here mm -hmm. or, you know, we're not even down on the field to hear what <laughs> they're talking <laughs> about. And, and obviously we did see moving extremities and so on. And a lot of times this is precautionary too, as it should be. You know, that's the right thing to do. It's much better be safe than sorry. So hopefully, you know, prayers and hopefully that it that is the case here it's more precautionary than anything else uh, and hopefully the student is, is okay over there and uh oh uh, getting looks like maybe the student is getting dad, carried out. dad is maybe carrying her out i i saw doing some paperwork by the emt So if she's not going with the EMT, going home with Dad, that's probably a good sign there. But, man, there's a thing no one wants to see any of these. No, it's strange, things, strange uh, sure. sequence of events. Yeah. Because you, Quinn has done for the game as well with what we and Field is also fouled, also recently injured. So three. Injuries. Right. And going into the game, Sam Ansprott. Portville's head coach out there as talking well. Talking to his guys, yeah. No, he's out in the middle. Oh, he's out in yeah, the field. Out, yeah, they, out, out, just before that, I saw them call all the players over to huddle um, to talk to his guys. And, you know, you got to make sure they're, they're all their heads are in the right place, too, if you're going to continue course. the game. You know, it's... It's it's hard to see a, a, a teammate or a competitor down and, and taking off on a stretcher and then continue to play. It's not an easy thing to do. And there, um, Dobby's mo mother goes out on the field to make sure Looks like she'll be going with him. by the Portville players here too, guys. So look at that, they're all coming out to uh, show their respect and concern for Dottie White. Well, that's a real, real classy move there by the Panthers. I'm sure the officials are going to if, and it seems like this game is going to continue. Um, you got to get get the players a, a second here to stretch yeah, out a little bit. Yeah, that was a lengthy delay, so and, they're going to probably get moment, both yeah. both teams a second or two to try to try to loosen up. Yeah, and after all of that, uh, you know, I guess we do have to get back to the game. There was a fumble turnover on the play. Holcomb did recover um, on that fumble. So Portville is going to get the ball back. 10-25 left, fourth quarter. As you can see, score is 34-20. There's so just a lot of bad news for the Hillbillies here tonight. And I guess this is a recap here um, of the turnover. Yeah, this, I think is. It's hard to say exactly what happened, or as the players are stretching, um, 
trying to get ready. And, and you know, the guys on the field still got to continue. The coaches still have to continue to coach here um, and, and get – you want everyone to be in the right mental state and be safe the rest of the game, and that's that's not necessarily easy to do. And if you're a parent in the stand, you're a nervous wreck right now. <laughs> you know, it's so absolutely, it's so hard. You know, you know, I was talking to some of the other dads, and and my son's just graduated, and like when they're in the middle of every play, you, you're you, every time they hard contact, you're you're. You're tense. You're clinching. You're holding your breath. Is he gonna get up? Is he gonna get up? Is he gonna get up? It's uh, it's a, it's an awesome feeling. You get so excited for it, but you're always nervous when it's your own kid out there. Extra nervous. It's uh, it's a bittersweet, amazing, fun thing, but it's scary as heck sometimes too. Yeah, it's and it just really just takes all the air out of your tires here. Just some of those injuries really but uh we're back at action here Aaron and coleman we'll and then holcomb in the backfield see if fredonia can get a stop on defense keep this holcomb game close. gets the ball and not much there good job by the interior line there the grow crawl amongst others in on that tackle You know, and obviously in, in Portville, doing they're taking their time here. You know, they're out, they're out two scores already. They're hoping to go up three, and they want that clock to run also. So they're not huddling up, but they're not in any rush to uh, snapping the ball, which is the right thing to do. Back in the I formation, Twins right, gives the Holcomb once again, dances around, and good job once again by the Fredonia interior. Yeah, he got caught lead in the rush. He got uh, six, we go. 62 in there, it looks. Yeah, there's Kata making the initial yeah, contact. Price had nice con or penetration there to disrupt it initially. Yes, 62, that That's is Coosdale yeah. in on defense making the play. Yeah, I like, Kata's impressed me tonight. Yep. He's, uh, he's been pretty good at filling gaps and it's, it looks like Glavy's going to bend him out there too, so. Yeah, he was <laughs> limping during that break. It's. Again, they're taking their time here, as we should, or as they should. And it's going to be uh, third and seven here. See if the Hillbillies can get a stop. Back to Holcomb. Great and tackle. Ka Ka Kata again, man. Kata, he, he's, that's, he's a, he had a bright future, a sophomore, oh, I, I, and, he's, and he's, he's not the biggest sophomore in the world either, but he plays twice his size, and that's a real nice open field tackle. So yeah, his body as he continues to mature and he fills into his body. It's the weight room, and uh, so yeah, he definitely has a bright future. And we'll see in there. It's fourth and five. The the Panthers are going to be going for it. They got Holcomb in the backfield. It looks like start off. Looks like they're going to go a shotgun formation. Under center, that play, action. play action to Holcomb, sets, throws. And good defense yeah. there by uh, 12. Brady Helmer in, and in the game, making a nice defensive play there, breaking yeah, up the uh, ball. You got to go zone. next man up out there. Yeah, um, yeah they, 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 they did the play action rollout, one of my uh, old – old go-to plays. Probably ran that about 10 times in a row before. He, he played that very well <laughs> as the ball hit the receiver's hand. He got his hands up there, knocked it away. So, I mean, it's a great stand and, uh, at that point for Fredonia. I'm not I mean, sure what they're going to do on I, offense. Yeah, right? I we see a couple new numbers. I see six go Brennan Lincoln going in there and 35. 35. And he is not, not even on, on the, the roster. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate to so, laugh. I, they got yeah. Han in there at 15. At quarterback? No, I'm sorry, 15 Brown. Tim Brown. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Kevin Brown. Kevin Brown. There we go. Has, sorry about that. He has played a and little I, bit of quarterback. I have mentioned life. that to Coach Paul Vino that, that he should maybe get some reps in at quarterback. 35. A nice run here. And, and, and the radio, too, says. 
Number 35. He, I, think don't, he, I think it's a JV call-up yeah. because he doesn't have a name on his yeah, um, right. on the back of his jersey. But that's a real well. nice first carry. Nice block there by Kroll seeing the edge. He's not the biggest Good guy. Good drive by Brady Helmer downfield making a block. He is. He is actually. Yep, he looks like he has got a JV body. Oh, Brown, a little trouble to snap, but he's just going to take off with it. He's going to be pushed out of bounds. By Holcomb. It looked like he was about to lay a big old hit on him. <laughs> So good job by Brown, not panicking too much. Yep, and yep. And that's, just, hey, just take off running, get a couple yards. And that's that's what you're really nervous about when you enter new players into the game yeah. is that exchange. But, yeah, they're going to keep number 35 in there. Maybe he's a call-up from JV because of the low numbers at running back. And he breaks a tackle in the backfield. Can he get around the edge? Not quite. It looks like a loss of one or two on the play. He's showing some good speed, yep. but that's going to bring up third down for the Hill. Oh, yeah, third and a good eight, I would say. Which, oh, wow. What do they got going on here? We got Fukata's coming in the backfield now. And I was wondering about that. Is he... Is he a running back as aggressive and as strong as he plays? Um, and he's going to be the lead blocker for Brown, and he's going to be met rather rudely by Coleman, and, being it uh, on fourth down. I wonder what the coaching staff decides to do here. Looks like they're going to be punting. Bryce Bacher is in to punt for the Hillbillies. And now, I mean, with all the changes and in injuries, he got... Yeah, make sure you get the enough guys out there. Now, didn't Legro play some running back a little bit? A little bit, not a ton. And you can see a lot of guys running in. Uh, Mike Ball running in late here. No one's back for on the return. Oh. Brocker, I, I think he just hit it right into the line ah. there. That's unfortunate play there yeah. for the Hillbillies, yeah. but. Oh, and Rush is signaling like they got the ball, but that's not quite how it goes. Hey. Well, you know what, if it, wait, hold on now. If it goes off of a Portville player, no, now it's has, a block. It, yeah, it, it has, has to right, be right, right. Pass the line of scrimmage, yes. Pass the line of scrimmage, yep, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So that's, yeah, it's like a block. It's, that went right into the back, I think. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, they got a lot of different players going. Yeah, out there right you know, now. And, and it's good to see some other guys getting a chance. I see 27 Logan Ritter out there, a name I don't know if we've called all year. Yeah, he's going out to play linebacker, yeah. taking the role of Davi, who once again just really hope he's all right. And uh, I'll be definitely waiting for the text message from you later when you find out. All right. All right. <laughs> You know, he's got a bright future uh, on the basketball court coming yeah, up this year as too. well. I think that's his standout sport, so hopefully he'll be all right. It's a handoff. on the carry, takes it to the outside. Like he's he, got the edge, and he is going to be tripped up there, but it'll be a bounce? first down. They're, they're rolling the clock. Yep. Smart play by the senior running yeah. back. Yeah. And, and good job by the officials, even if he did step out to roll the clock at this point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good job by 68 there in the block. And Helmer and who else is over there made the trip tackle there? I didn't quite see the number. It might have been Ball. He was over in that area too. So it'll be first down and 10. It's not first and goal. It's right around the 11. Yeah, I, I, I think Holcomb, we, I, we've seen a number of Connolly, actually every game I've called this year, there's been a Connolly Cup nominee, and I think Holcomb may be this week's version of that, having a heck of a, this time giving the Coleman the up back, and it's going to be second down now.
I do want to mention here during the break, three former alum uh, football players of Fredonia all on the team last year. Jayhawk, Keegan Whitfield at Buff State, and Micah Davis at Utica University on Sunday. They are going to be playing against each other 2 p.m. Uh, come on up, support your local alumni, going on to do some good things in college football. Um, and if you want to meet up with the parents, we may or may not be there around noon. Holcomb gets another carry going to the outside. Nice job there. Way Pushed out of bounds. Yeah. You got uh, 21 out in there. Luca Gullo making a. Oh, nope. 58. Kyle that was, that, no, that was 27. That was yeah. Ritter. Ritter. Yeah, Ritter in on the tackle. And uh, Profits out there. Ryan Profits out there as well. 56 playing linebacker. Okay. Third down here. And Coleman and Holcomb are still in. At what point do you... Oh, is that a jump? Yeah, they're going to the hard count. It's going to be half the distance. Smart play by the, by the Panthers. Now, uh, how much... Uh, Playing time, uh, there's some of these uh, young oh, freshmen. Oh, the young guns? Uh, well, it's, it's I'll got tell you. Special teams? It's or, a, uh, I, I know, I've seen some highlights of Keegan. I know he scored a touchdown in oh, the JV game. Wonderful. Um, it's JV? Yeah, it's the oh, JV wonderful. squads. Yeah, oh, awesome. That's, so, uh, you, that's that's great that those programs have and, the JV yep, squads. Well, they had, like Utica alone had 95 freshmen on their team. Wow. So they better have a JV wow. squad, right? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, That's seven great. freshman running back. Uh, Mike. So he's Mike has been getting two series or so a game at mm -hmm, running back mm -hmm. and awesome. uh, having some success playing some special teams. I know Jay has played some. I obviously haven't seen Buff State play. I always. Uh, I just yeah. see some Facebook news. Holcomb on the carry and, and is going to score easily. Not. And kind of cap off and his that, yeah, fantastic that's kind night. Of Hopefully, I, I mean, be, uh, Portville, I'm probably pulling him out of the game at this point. The last thing you want to do is <laughs> lose him. Um, yeah, and that might uh, kind of put this game out of hand here for the Hillbillies. Well, it does put the game out of hand here for the Hillbillies. So after a great first half of back and forth football, uh, the Panthers have uh, taken the Taking the lead in the yeah. and another, another extra kick. point. I think go off a tree. <laughs> Hit like the, um, also, Coach Laduga has been here helping out. Um, Fredonia State, you just mentioned Fredonia State is a doubleheader baseball game tomorrow at noon. Um, some local alum, uh, I think uh, Allstrom's playing Four Finger Lakes, right? Oh, he's. Okay. Ludwig, Owen Ludwig, another Fredonia alum. Derek Walters is playing for Fredonia. So, again, there's some alumni between the Dunkirk and Fredonia schools um, that are going to be here as well. That's great for uh, great for uh, the local, uh, local athletics. A couple players playing on the second level. You'll love to see it. I saw a few of, uh, yeah. So just a, and Brady Corbett few other. also playing for Fredonia. I don't. Sorry. Oh no. And uh, both Alstrom boys. Uh, Peyton is on the Fredonia State team, and Alex's brother is his second year on the Finger Lakes team. Um, so a lot of alumni, a lot of things to do. Come out and support your um, local athletes. It's great to see kids go on and play at the next level you know that's what mm -hmm, six mm -hmm. to seven percent of high school athletes play a college sport so um it's great to see i'll be uh first first to tell you that it's tougher than you think so <laughs> it's it's incredible you know you say oh it's only d3 and i'll tell you yeah. what d3 is a different story too there, there's a lot of very good players. Han on the return, it bounces <laughs> off. It. We tackle right around the 35, 251 remaining. Um, yeah, there's some amazing talent. Watching my two sons, two teens play. Uh, Washington Jefferson, Utica, Matt Lauder at, at Cortland. You have Nick Whitfield at St. Francis. He threw his first touchdown pass as a oh. D1 quarterback last week. Love to week. hear it. Awesome. Uh, Great for him. Lauder's starting at linebacker for Cortland. As a freshman. 
sophomore. Sophomore, sophomore. He played, he got minutes of snaps as a freshman on a team that was nationally ranked. I mean, it's incredible. Um, so, you know, let's keep that up, hopefully. I know some of these young men are looking to play at the next level on this year's team. Brown still at quarterback. And, ooh, that hand off to, Nice cut there up the middle, so very little fear. I, You know, he's running between the tackles there. He's cut it up strong with confidence. And, I mean, literally, I, I want to say Steve Dando might have mentioned this young man to me last night um, getting moved up, and, and I didn't know who he was. And he was asking, you know, what I thought of him. I'm like, I don't even know the kid, so I can't answer that. Um, but if that's him, he looks pretty good out there. Obviously, he's got to grow. He's a little small, but they're showing no fear and running the ball very yeah, it's... hard. He's got a nice feel for the ball and cutting and inside. Showed some patience He's fumbling there. the ball, buddy. He got another couple couple yards to bring down third down here. Yeah. And As uh, we're down on about a minute 30 left in the game here. Uh, and like we said before, some injuries in this game have really just took all the energy out of this game. And the last yeah. 10 minutes have just been a, a, a little... Uh, a much different vibe. Yeah, 100%. Portville um, has a lot of subs in, too, which is good. You want to see these other guys? You want get those, in. yeah, get the fresh jerseys out there. Uh, so good for them. And back to Mysterious, number 35. Yeah, and I think he got a first down. He got it. And he put his shoulders down and turned the corner and he got the first down. A nice run here. He took on two defenders to get that first down. We'll take a moment to uh, thank again to Jackson Hickey, cameraman Cody Decker, and cameraman Cooper Steg Steger on uh, Stenger on another great night here uh, on Public Assets. For Fredonia going in, Derek Paradis. Oh, I know the name, a former uh, neighborhood kid. Oh, nice job. 35 Karen. dragon. The big boys. Couple yards. And that may be. And that might do it here at the orange ball. Yeah, that's going to be the last snap. But, uh, you know, the biggest story is obviously the health of the players that, that had to lead the game tonight. You know, Davi White, Jamison Quinn, Tim Fields. But congratulations to Portville. I mean, they played a real hard fought game and. And from their point of view, they came here in the Orange Bowl. They knew Fredonia was desperate for a win, and so were they. They now are two and one in the division, and it, it you know you got Southwestern uh, was now a two and zero oh in division. I'm not sure who they had tonight, and Maple Grove, Faulkner, Casadega seem to be the class of the division so far, and they were undefeated going in. Don't count out Salamanca. I know they lost a lot, but they're still well coached and a lot of good athletes down there. So this division is tough, and it's going to be a long road for the Hillbillies. But, Pat, thanks a lot for coming in. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's always great doing these games, coming back down to the Orange Bowl. I love Friday Night Lights, and uh, like I said, it was we got to take some of the positives away. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I think we'll see you in a couple weeks. Hopefully, I... I I'm thinking the dunker game might, might, I think we're doing the dunker game. Yeah, dunker probably the last, year, yeah, yeah the, last, the next game probably, so. Yeah, um, all right. Well, with that being said, thanks to our crew, um, and thanks for tuning in, everyone. You see some of the highlights of the game getting brought out by our crew now, and have a good night, everyone. Good night.